Today, for the very first time, I get to listen to this classic album. This is Metallica's Master of Puppets. <laughs> Don't look at me, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another album review slash reaction here on my channel. This is it, our second Metallica video. I, for the first time today, get to finally hear Master of Puppets. So the very first thing I want to say is, if anybody is watching this video that watched the Ride the Lightning video, thank you very much for watching. Um, that video, as of right now on my channel, has over 2,000 views, which might not sound like a lot to a lot of people, but for me and my channel, that is an enormous amount of people, especially in the few short weeks that that video has been out. So thank you very much. Um, I think I got kind of lucky with people really being into Metallica reactions at the moment, which I mean, that's the reason that I, why I decided to do these reactions anyway. But on top of that, I have never heard these albums and there's never been going to be a better time than leading up to 70, 72 seasons in April. So we've got another month to do and justice for all. But we are here today to talk about Master of Puppets. So thank you very much for joining us. And like I said, if you're here because you watched the other video, thank you for possibly subscribing. Think about it. You know, I don't usually ask that in my videos, but think about subscribing, leaving a comment, liking all that stuff. It does really help. And I think that I've some of the other videos that I've released on my channel since the Ride the Lightning video, like my Gorillas reaction, and a really cool unboxing of some really neat things of what's in this box right here that we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. I've released those videos since we released the Ride the Lightning reaction and they've gotten way more views than I would have thought. And so I think that I'm just kind of in the algorithms. People are in, interacting with my channel a little bit more now. And so thank you very much for helping to make that happen. Anyone that watched that Ride the Lightning video, I think it was like a really big deal for my channel, even though it doesn't necessarily sound like a big deal compared to other channels. So uh, I'm Patrick. This is my friend, Chris. Hi. I wanted to point that out because in some of the comments of the Ride the Lightning video, people were like, dude on the left, dude on the right, guy on the right, you know. We could have worn name tags. Well, we could have, but what I'll do is I'll just edit some really cool looking things underneath us here at the beginning of the video that'll pop up all the other names. Wow. If, if we had Twitter handles, it'd be like, at Chris Schoenberg or whatever, you know. <laughs> but we don't have any of that stuff, I don't think. You don't have a Twitter handle, do you? No. No, and I don't use Twitter either. So, uh, but anyway, a uh, few things I want to get out of the way right away. Uh, the Ride the Lightning video worked exactly the way I wanted it to work. I was able to use the actual audio that we were listening to in that video. And you can hear Metallica along with us in that video if you haven't seen it yet. So I'm assuming that Master of Puppets will be the same. That I'll be able to use the legally, legally, use the audio from Master of Puppets. So you, watcher, will be able to hear everything that we are hearing in this video. If by some chance that's not the case and I'm not allowed to upload this video with the music in it. I'll have to upload it without the music, in which case look in the description of the video and I will leave a link to listen along with us on Spotify and any link I can find to listen to Master of Puppets with us. Um, we're going to try to do things a little bit differently this video, but know that I will always have clearly labeled on screen what we're listening to. I know it helps if you're just like scrubbing through the video, like looking through the different timestamps and whatnot. Uh, it helps to have like clear visuals on screen. And then also it's just easy to know when we're switching from song to song if you want to skip around a little bit. And speaking of skipping around a little bit, I will include timestamps in the description of the video. So on the timeline, there should be all the different sections, including each of the individual songs on the album. So if you have a favorite song off of Master of Puppets and you just want to go there and see our reaction to that, uh, feel free to do that. And then after we're done listening to the album all the way through with our pausing or not pausing, however we decide we're going to do it, uh, we'll talk about the album a lot afterwards as well. We'll be referencing all sorts of different things and talking about it probably a little bit in the context of the time that it came out and all those different things. So if you want to hear us talk about the album as a whole, feel free to skip to the last later sections of the video after we're done listening. Speaking of one that came out, did you know that Metallica was actually formed to be on the Stranger Things soundtrack from the season that just came out oh, like two it, years ago? Oh, oh, that's when Metallica was formed. Metallica was formed then. They're a pretty new band. Yeah, they're super yeah. new. Speaking of Stranger Things, did you notice I have my Stranger Things shirt on? Oh, I, I kind of thought that, that That's what this that Hawkins was. reference to. So, I have not even seen the season that Metallica was in. You know, it's I, I really liked it. I, have you watched some of the other seasons? Yeah, I watched the first one. Yeah. Oh, was that you, season three? It's season four, actually. They're already on season four. I don't know if I've seen season two or not. It, season two is pretty good. Season, or no, I take it back. Season two is the one that's kind of crappy. Season three brings it way back, and season four was really good. And I had heard beforehand that season four was the last season, but they lied. 
there's another season. This next season is going to be the last season one. one was incredible. Season one is fantastic. And I actually think season four is really close to that good. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's so really cool great. that they spent all that money to like make all make of these band. records to make it seem like that music came out in 1986. When yes. Clearly it didn't. Yeah. Well, comment the, below. <laughs> well, the, the cool thing about that is like, I actually am a little bit disappointed with the way they, cause obviously master of puppets, the song was like a really big deal because of, uh, the show like it really created a resurgence for Metallica in the last year very much like it did for Kate Bush right oh yeah. you can't be running up that hill without thinking of Stranger Things right it's insane what Stranger Things did for that show and now I think even The Last of Us is doing the same thing for certain songs because The Last of Us is uh had they use a lot of music in their uh in the show as well like they they used the very first episode ends in a really cool cliffhanger way with Depeche Mode playing yes. and they're playing uh uh one of my least favorite Depeche Mode songs. Uh, oh, shoot. Oh, that's why I can't remember what it's called. Oh, it's the one with the cool drum beat. Um, I'm taking a ride with my best friends. Do, do, de, do, do, de, do, de, do, do. You don't know how to big Depeche Mode fan. No. Uh, shoot. We can't move on from this until I, until I think of what it's called. This is very embarrassing. But while he's thinking about that, yeah. was The Sopranos the show that started this whole thing? Remember? Like the throwback music, right? Because they did that with that uh, Journey song? Uh, that's a good question. I know True Blood did it. Every episode of True Blood was actually named for the song that they played during the credits. That's pretty neat. But S Sopranos was before True Blood. Yeah. Because that was a, that was a big deal. Almost everything we mentioned is HBO. So it sounds like HBO is the thing that's like spearheading this. That's probably. But they have the money to pay for the rights to use this music. Yes. So, but hopefully, I really think that Stranger this Stranger Things thing, the phenomenon that was Stranger Things and what it did for those three songs, Separate Ways, Worlds Apart by Journey, which is one of my. Wait, that, it, was, a, that was a Stranger Things thing? Well, it was this year. Uh, oh, for this yeah, for this season, they uh, they had they did a remix of it, like a big orchestral remix, and they used the actual song early on in the season, and then the climax of the of the whole thing is set to the music of of that. Huh. So, and then they also have Kate Bush's running up the hill, and then they did an orchestral version of that as well for the show, and then there's a giant scene that uses Master of Puppets, the song Master of Puppets. And I have seen that, so I just want to point that out and say I have heard the dun 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 da 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 da, and I also know master, master, right? I know that. And when I hear that, what it makes me think of is the far better song from Nightwish, right? Master, apprentice, warrior, seventh seeker, hardcore, the wish master, da 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 da, way faster, way better guitar playing, far superior solo, and there's keyboards. So it's like, come on, how could that not be better than Metallica? But but so seriously though, I have heard that part of Master of Puppets, and I believe that in unless Master, I did, I think I was in looking setting up for this video, I saw Master of Puppets. The song is like eight minutes long, I think. Yeah, something like that. So I think the scene is, I think, quite a bit longer than that in the show. And it's actually the reason there it's such a big deal is because like one of the players actually plays the guitar solo I've in heard, the song. I've heard this. Yeah, I actually really dislike the way that it was used in the show, because they did Kate Bush's "Running Up the Hill" was so cool, but like the fact that the song was playing made sense contextually in the show. Master of Puppets, it's just like he's playing the guitar solo to like distract something. I don't want to get too too far away and give too Please. much spoilers, but like there's like. There's like a reason it's in the show because someone's like performing it or whatever. But really, you're just listening to the song, I think. Like, I don't think it had like they didn't re-record anything. You're just listening. It's basically like a music video with sound effects. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which I think is kind of it bums me out. Like the way they incorporated running up the hill was really cool in, in the, the show. Like it's phenomenal. It's like I literally cried watching that. And it's not sad. I mean, it kind of is. But like. It was so awesome and really gratifying and like really cool. And I like that song in general anyway. So to see it utilized in such a cool way and to like have emotional impact with the show was really cool. Just like all the stuff they've done with, the, with, uh, uh, in the last of us, a lot of the songs have a lot of meaning. They did a, uh, a Laura, a, was it Loretta Lynn? No. Uh, oh shoot. I'm my last of us. I'm terrible with this. This is awful. I should know, should have known this stuff. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but they've been using some cool music in The Last of Us, and it's been getting like huge bumps on like Spotify plays and stuff after every episode. So hopefully this trend continues and we get to see more usage of like real, like existing music uh, in 
really cool properties like this. Hopefully that continues. And the reason that I don't know any of this pop culture stuff is because ever since that Stranger Things came out, I stopped watching regular TV completely, and I only watch and read Metallica documentaries. Mm. That's why I know everything about Metallica, and mm-hmm. I never make any mistakes about what instrument was played mm. or like what color... Um, Jason Newstead's underwear was when he played on Master <laughs> of Puppets. Um, yes, I, I know that Jason Newstead did not play on Master of Puppets. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm just sensing a... Okay, so let's talk maybe, about... Maybe there's just a little bit of sarcasm. Let's there. talk about... So I'm so grateful, honestly, so grateful for all the people that watched the Ride the Lightning video. And again, I know 2,000 views doesn't seem like a lot to people, but for my channel, it is a huge deal. And... We got so many comments and I'm really like a lot of the comments were really great. And we joked at the very beginning of the Ride the Lightning video that, you know, you even said comment below negative comments like uh, are appreciated or whatever, which is great. Totally. For sure. But I have to just say the amount of people who commented that we talked too much over the music. What was the first thing I said, Chris, when we were done listening? We talked too much. I said, Okay, I put the headphones down and I looked right at the camera and I said, I am sorry that we just talked over that entire album. So one, I do want to point out, I did apologize for it in the previous video, but also like, I get it. I understand. I love watching reaction videos. It is my number one go-to form of entertainment right now. I, I couldn't live without the Last of Us reaction videos that I watch every week as the new episodes are coming out. I literally watch like, 10 hours of content every week just watching people react to that kind of stuff and i watch all sorts of cool stuff i watch lots of music ones and when i'm watching a reaction video i want to see the people reacting to stuff and so i totally agree with a lot of the comments like we screwed up when we were doing it i was really excited to have chris here with me for the first time i've never done a reaction with another person in person and so i we were we got excited and we were talking about music production stuff and he was trying to help me understand wh- that Metallica does sound like crap because it's from the 80s. You know, you have to like, it's it's okay that it sounds so terrible because it's so old. Like you have to like give it that, you know, he, that's what you said it's verbatim. You said it's okay that it sounds like crap because it's from the 80s, unquote. <laughs> 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 but anyway, if you didn't watch that video, we talked a lot about the time it came out. And we I had to you have a whole history of metal. And we talked about the fact that I didn't think that double bass drumming existed until the nine, mid-90s. And so this video, I'm smarter. I've learned. I've heard Metallica from before this. So I think I know much better what to expect. However, I, I do have to say, the amount of people who are mad that we talked over the solos in particular was astounding to me because I am not the type of person that like listens to music for the solos. That is not me. I did talk in the last video about how I really enjoy children of Bodom, And I think you're one of the, you got me into them, I believe. Okay. And I think the coolest part of children of Bodom is the keyboards and the solos. So like, I do really love the solos and I really think it's cool that they, do the intermingling of the solos between the keys and the guitars and all that stuff. So like when you're listening to a children of Bodom song, I'm waiting for the solo because it's like, Oh, here we go. It's the solo. And I think that's what people wanted me to experience with ride the lightning. They want to be able to be like, here goes Kirk. He's going to fly around the guitar and it's going to be so amazing. And instead we were talking about other stuff. So like, I really, 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 really want to try to make an effort this time to to pay more attention to the music, which I know that sounds really stupid because that's what we're doing. We're sitting here, we're listening to it, we're reacting to it. But on my channel, I have just, I've become accustomed to talking about the production predominantly. And that involves like just, I hear 10 seconds of a thing and then I talk about that the 10 seconds for the rest of the song, (laughs) pretty much. Because when you're focusing on that aspect of music, the production doesn't change within the song very much. Once you hear the first minute of a song, the production is the same the whole rest of the song. So so I want to try to focus more on the the playing and I want to try to focus more on like the song arrangements and I want to try to talk less and experience more because I think that's honestly like if I was watching a reaction video, which I do all the time, I don't want I I don't want it, it is frustrating when people talk over the like 
just heart stopping moments in the last of us, you know, like uh, you, you got to know what's going on with Ellie and Joel. And if you don't, if you miss one sentence, it can change the whole way you feel about it. So like, I get it. I'm not saying though, that we're not going to talk at all while we're listening, because that's the whole point of what we're doing. In my opinion, we're here to talk about it. We're here to discuss it. We're here to share our, our experience, our shared experience. And then our, also our individual experience and our taste in music, which is very different. So that's where I think the sort of value of this comes from. Right. Yeah. And it, for sure. I mean, I don't watch a lot of reaction videos, but and that's and fine. I, and I, I just like, um, when I do watch things like that, I just enjoy watching somebody else's take on something that right. I do have a lot of experience with. And I don't really think that there is, as much of a problem with the talking, although I get if you're really like married to some of those solos, that that might be a little bit sad. But what Patrick, one of the big surprises that we're going to reveal today is that Patrick is going to do a note by note review of every Metallica guitar solo from Kill 'Em All all the way through the new album. There's going to be probably like 150 videos. They'll mm-hmm. all be several hours long. Yeah, um, I'm gonna. He's going to tab them out. He's actually going to play right. them all. For yep, you. I got my guitar right off screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. that's what's going to happen. Hundred that 150 videos is about how long it'd take for one song <laughs> if I was going to try to do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I could probably program some of the part, guitar parts on like a, in like Reason or something. Yeah. Program some solos, but uh, but no, tr- I will not sub subject anyone to any of my musical anything's. So that's um, I do one thing I do have to say to point out that I'm really excited. Uh, we do have here we have Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets on vinyl. And these are Chris's. Chris, how did you acquire these? How did I acquire these? Um, we're probably messing up the audio by having the cardboard between us and the microphones. It's not too bad. Um, anyway. Can't you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Patrick bought these for me a very long time ago. I did. I used to work at a record store uh, that sold everything and records. But uh, at the time, with my discount, I was able to order stuff, special order stuff like this, get it in, and then use my discount to get it really good vinyl was like insanely cheap for us working at hastings hastings entertainment is what the store was and um so yeah for two christmases in a row i think i bought you each of these oh, I thought they were at the same time but I, they might have been but i don't know because i would imagine what it was was they probably cost i would guess they probably cost 20 bucks and with my discount i got them for 14.99 wow would be my thought which now Shall we just take a look? See, these what ones have never master been opened. Of, master of you can puppets. tell by the shrink wrap and the sticker on the front. Oops, that's the wrong side. Let's these lo- have never been. Let's opened. load up Discogs and scan this bad boy and see what. Uh, let's see what the value is. What the last copy of Master? Now this is a very prominent record, and this is not an original pressing. This is the pressing from two thousand and eight. Yep. So Master of Puppets vinyl pressing reissue from two thousand eight. This. Uh, the most this is sold for is $48. Wow. The cheapest it's ever sold for is $20, the average of $30. Right now there's five for sale, one for $86, one for $75, one for $76, and one for $45 Canadian dollars with $33 shipping. Somebody's trying to bank off of the new record. So <laughs> I would say that your these final have appreciated <laughs> very well over the last That's year. the best investment. Let's check. I'm curious for Ride the Lightning. Let's look, let's look up Ride the Lightning. Chris, are you familiar with what Discogs is? Yes. If anyone's watching this video and you're not familiar with what Discogs is, it's phenomenal. Look it up, especially if you're a music collector, whether you collect vinyl, CDs, cassette tapes, whatever. I am right now in the process of, uh, okay, Ride the Lightning. Um, uh, average sale price is $29. Highest it's ever sold for is $60. There is... Uh, 14 for sale right now. And these are pressed at the same time, right? 2008, I think, is is what it says down there. There's one for $40, $49. There is one for $15 plus $5 shipping. Let's click on it and see if it's damaged. Scuffs, Edgeware, top right corner has large creases, so that's why it's significantly lower. Here's one for $80 from Kazakhstan. We can order a copy of this from Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan or whatever it is. Okay. Um, is that where Borat's from? Yeah. Oh, there's one for thirty dollars plus ten dollars shipping in the United States. So it looks like about looks like about thirty dollars average. You could buy a copy of this. Um, but anyway, I'm actually in the process of taking my very enormous CD collection and adding it all onto my Discogs account to uh, to catalog everything. Basically, shall we check how many items I've added and what its worth is? We shall. 
So right now I have 895 uh, albums that I put in my collection with a maximum value of possible $16,328, an average price, an average value of $7,590. However, almost all of it are CDs and Discogs is not as good and reliable with CD values as it is with records. Because I can, you can look up a copy of like Metallica's Master of Puppets on, on vinyl and it'll say like, there's 10,000 people in the world who own this. But if you look oh, it up on CD, there's like 500. So that puts them on. Right. But you, whereas you know that there's been far more copies of CD Master of Puppets sold. People just aren't putting their CDs onto Discogs as much. But if that sounds interesting to you, look up Discogs, create an account. It's free and you can just start cataloging your stuff. It's really cool. You can actually find me on there and look at my collection and everything. Um, I think my name is just Patrick Muselak on there if you want to look it up. So that's really cool. And I might share some of that stuff later. But we have these. We're going to put them over here for now. And we'll, we'll readjust that in a second because another really fun thing we're going to do here at the intro, in the intro for this video. Yes, we're still in the intro of this video. But hey, we're only 20 minutes in. We're doing good. Last time we, would, we had been talking about for like four hours at this point. So I brought up this box in the intro of the video. The very intro when we first started talking. I just filmed a video on my channel going through the contents of this box, and I just released it actually earlier today, or yesterday, and I'm very excited to talk about what's in here with you, Chris, because I want to see your reaction to what's in here. I don't think that in our, however long we've been friends since I acquired these, that I've ever talked to you about them, okay. but if you remember me ever bringing these up, please feel free to let me know and be like, you're, you're an idiot, we talked about these five, six, seven years ago. So first I gotta get rid of some of the stuff that's in here that's not this. Shout out to Godzilla. Shout out to the old Godzilla magazine. That has nothing to do with any of this. Here is one of the very first things we're gonna look at. This is my Metallica Metal Edge. Now I, I don't know if I mentioned this in the previous video or not, but you can take a look at that. That was when Death Magnetic was coming out. But I subscribed to Metal Edge magazine from, I think, when I was a freshman in high school, which would have been 2005, maybe even 2004, to when they shut down in 2009. And these are the last few episodes or issues of um, Metal Edge. And the cool thing about each of these is that they each come with a CD full of bands, demos, and all sorts of cool things that they were trying to promote in the magazine. Then also bands would just send them stuff and they'd put it on their compilation CDs. So these are really cool things to have. Um, in the Metallica one, if you'll look, there's actually a Metallica poster in there that I never took out. That's cool. Yep, you'll get I'm to it getting eventually. Getting to it. I was reading the review to see if this guy was sure. going to say something nice about Death Magnetic, which I, I highly don't. doubt it. This magazine. I is, like that record. I know, but I'm just saying these. This this magazine was run by, like I think in, in one of these articles they have. He talks about how difficult it is to talk about no, the Metallica records. Oh, my does it? Can I even fold? No. You can you can pull it out. It comes out this way, so you can see it. But you can't unfold oh. it because I didn't take it out. We could technically, and I thought about taking it out. So there's. Hold on, the mic's in the way. There's Bono and Rex Brown there. <laughs> And I think I think that this is Taylor Swift and that's Cardi B. There you go, Taylor Swift uh, and Cardi B. I think so. You didn't know that they were Metallica, but there they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's really cool. I thought that was neat. I'll show you that. Uh, I just have to point out my favorite article I've ever read ever in anything is this Hollywood Undead, the worst band in America article from this one that says terrorist group name up here that I probably can't say out loud or will get demonetized, which we can't be monetized in the first place, but you know this thing. But that was a band back in the day. Huh? When, we were, when we were in high school, this was a band, not a terrorist group. It was also uh, something, uh, that was the name of Archer's, uh, in the FX show Archer, that was the yeah. name of their uh, spy agency. It was. was this, this was. was. Huh. But anyway, there's a hilarious article in here that does nothing but bash Hollywood Undead in the most horrible, foul way imaginable. Like, the dude has a personal vendetta against them, and he just tears them to shreds. That's awesome. And it's, it's serious. It's not like... It's 100% serious. That's awesome. And the whole thing, the guy just... The, the thing he hates the most is that he did an interview with them, and he was so mad at the interview that he couldn't, like, print it in here. But he says that in the interview, they were saying that, like, they're they're really excited for the, about their sound because they're the first band ever to mix rock and rap and stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> Oof. Which, I just want to point out, though, I do have that album. I do own a copy of it, and I did enjoy it at the time. And, you know, I'm not a hate. I don't. We've all grown. There's very few artists that I would like trash like that, being Coldplay and Katy Perry, the only two that I would. But. Katy Perry? Yeah, I just don't like her. I can't stand her. But, but no offense. Oh, no offense. Boy. If Katy Perry wants oh, to come do a reaction with boy. me, we can clear the beef. But. But Katie, you can just so, come with me. You don't have to have Patrick so, right there. So here is what we're actually here to talk about. And I'm really excited to show I you suck this. Toes. Yeah, I'm really excited to show you this. Here we have one of three. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. This is a this is a Metallica comic book, mm -hmm. rock and roll comics. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. These are like super accurate drawings of them. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an incredibly accurate story of how they formed as a band too. Like it's verbatim this exactly. Is, this is rad. <laughs> this it really is, is so cool, cool, right? And it's got like pictures of the albums and stuff on there. Here you can put. Oh, yeah. Let me hold it closer. Excuse me. It, now I will say, in the video that I recorded going through this box, I did uh, go through and show a lot of the insides of all these, the, in, the the covers and the back and everything. I have a whole stack in this in this box of just uh, rock and roll and metal comic books. That I bought at an auction for two dollars and fifty cents. They're making fun of it, a Metallica, a little bit. That's actually kind of funny. There's stuff about Lars playing hey, there's tennis. Elvira. In here. There's Elvira. There's Elvira. That's awesome. This is so cool. Mighty Mouse. Yeah, I knew you would appreciate that. People take metal too seriously these days. Yeah. So there's that one. Here's this one. That's awesome. <laughs> Boy, the artwork is like somehow even worse. It's <laughs> but it's got a like legitimate Metallica logo on it. It's like, really this was cool, licensed, right? right? Look, they're fighting skeletons. That is so cool. And look at the back. It's a full page drawing. Like it's a full. Oh, cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's awesome. And this this was in Newstead era. Mm -hmm. But that's huh. That's super yeah, th cool. This one is. Are they? Is that one a Revolutionary Comics? No. This no. is this is Metal Metal Thunder. Uh, so this one, this one was from 1989. This is August 1989. And this one is from... It would be on the inside cover. Sorry, I'm not a comic book guy. That's all right. From 1992. Look at so that. This, yeah, man, look at Cliff Burton. Look how <laughs> badass that it's is. It's cool artwork. God. Are there metal comic books now? I don't think so. There's Iron Maiden ones, I know, but well, other than that... Well, Iron Maiden's older than Metallica. I know, I know, but I mean, they're still making... They're like, a, there's... The Iron Maiden character, I think, is like a legit comic book character. Okay, last one. Last Metallica one. Man, that's so cool. <laughs> oh, this says 100% unauthorized. They, like, tried to draw the logo, but they couldn't get the license, so it's just a approximation. They, a lot of them do say that. All the ones that are this revolutionary, it's unauthorized and proud of it. Oh, this one's an early enough one that it doesn't have it, but most of them have unauthorized and proud of it. Huh, that's super and cool. And this one's a color one, yeah. Oh, this is some of the same pictures as the other one, but this is in color. Oh, it might be a deluxe edition then of that, but I don't think the whole thing is full is the same. I don't think it's the exact same. Is this like a crappy Photoshop version of the album and the other one they're cartoonized? That's yeah. really that's really cool. Huh. Well, look at the back cover too. I love that. Oh yeah. That's like the kill 'em all thing, right? I think isn't there the Just, statue? It's justice. Oh justice, sorry, justice. Yeah, for sure. Sorry I get those two and mixed up. Jump in the fire. Huh, that's super rad. Okay, so just since you like that so much, let's just real quick go through some of these other ones. You can go through. Wow. Oh, we got Aerosmith. I know Aerosmith. You don't have to show straight. all of them. I'm not going to show them. I, it's Aerosmith. No, no. We, I do have a whole video on my channel where I go through all of these. I just posted it yesterday. Guns and Roses, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. Another Guns N' Roses. Oh, with the guy, with the cartoon characters, like from the uh, album cover of Appetite. Mm-hmm. And this is the Grateful Dead, which is sort of hilarious. Who? Oh, this is just 60s San Francisco. 60s in San Francisco. It just happens to be Bon Jovi looking really, really good. The Sex Pistols, <laughs> which is rad. Boy, howdy. <laughs> this is the kind of, I guess the internet has replaced this. You used to have to print this stuff on paper. <laughs> um, oh, these are awesome. Kiss and White Snake and Van Halen and... That's another generic. Oh, it's like, a, oh okay, because I'm like, that's Clapton and Ozzy, I think. It's so or awesome is it to me Jim that Morrison? it's awesome to me that you know who some of these people oh, are, because I just I don't know. know. Of course, David Bowie, yeah. another Guns N' Roses. Wow, lots of Guns N' Roses. Motorhead, there is not a picture of Lemmy on the front or the back. Um, Wait, that's it's Megadeth and Motorhead. Oh. 
Oh, that makes sense because that's uh, the Megadeth logo with the motor. I don't like Megadeth, so you can comment about that in the thing. I'm not a Dave Mustaine guy, but how can you not love Motorhead? Mm -hmm. Um, I agree, and I I don't barely. I don't know what the Motorhead guy's name is. Lemmy Kilmeister. Well. Oh, the logo. The logo sorry, guy. Sorry. The the. I just know so few about so little about so few of these that I was like, oh, I know who the. And like, and I only know that. fan art of Jimi Hendrix, Jimi which Hendrix. is always funny. Pink Floyd. This, you know, the Dark Side of the Moon just turned fifty. That's mm-hmm. probably worth maybe sixty nine cents now. <laughs> Poison, which is hilarious that somebody took the time to do that. <laughs> Scorpions, Anthrax, another Aerosmith, ACDC, and Genesis. Genesis. Somebody made a Genesis comic book. Okay, because there's uh, Phil Collins. Phil Collins. And Peter Gabriel. They're the same guy, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> um. Thank you. That was very fun. I'm glad you enjoyed that because I uh, I did not know such a thing existed. I had so much fun going through it in that video on my channel, so I highly recommend looking that up. Link in the description. I'll try to remember to do that. If not, it's just the video that was posted most recently before this one. Um. But I knew I had those two Metallica, or the, I I thought I only had one Metallica comic book, but I actually have three, which is awesome. That's and in, awesome. in two of them, they're fighting demons and stuff. But I do remember when I first got those comic books, Metallica was the only band that I knew kind of a little bit about at the time. And so that was the one that I read. I read the one that was the most plain one where it talks about the history of how they formed. And I remember reading it, but I don't remember a single thing that was in it. Huh. Which is why I didn't mention any of that stuff last video for Ride the Lightning. Because in Ride the Lightning video, we talked about basically everything I knew about Metallica, which wasn't that much, other than the Black Album. And whatever WWE talked about it over time. Maybe it was those comic books that led them to do Through the Never. Uh, possibly. And Did def- you watch? You didn't watch that movie. I don't know what that you even mean. There was uh, a movie. There was a Metallica movie. I thought that was the Saint Anger thing or whatever that well, they did. Oh, there was that too. That was a documentary. Oh, some kind of monster, right? That was some kind of monster, the documentary. Yeah. But yeah. The, Through the Never, which people complained about a lot because they didn't get it. Was What was it? Like a... That's kind of the thing. It's a little bit hard. I think it was a little bit hard to explain. I went and watched it in the theater. I bought a ticket ahead of time to a movie, which I had never done up until that point. It was when it came out. It was me and my brother by ourselves in the theater, and they played it loud. Wow. And it was cool. Like, it was way louder than normal movie. Was it like a concert, or? See, that's the thing where it gets confusing, because I think my take on it is that it was a live concert video that just had a bunch of the cinematic crap cut in. Okay. But it seemed like people were really confused about, like, what's the meaning of this? What's the plot and stuff? And it was like, it was Metallica, and, like, their stage was awesome at that time. I, uh, it must have... What album was that for? What year was about this? About what year? It was either Death... It was either Death Magnetic or the, um... Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Hardwired to Self-Destruct era. Maybe it was between those records. I don't remember. Uh. You could comment so below recent, and tell me how much little I know about Metallica trivia. Recent, though... In the recent, last decade. Recent-ish. And, yeah. um, but, like, it just, it was weird. And I think huh. that it freaked people out. But, like, Metallica plays. The stage was awesome. It was that stage that Tate Towers built for them. And they, huh. like, um, they had, was I, I saw them on that tour, too. I have seen Metallica live several times. I've paid lots of money. I can't wait till Metallica gets close again because this time I will pay the $500 for, like, floor seats. I've not done that. I want to do that. I really want to be very close to James Hetfield. That would be really cool for me. Um. But uh, they had the stage and, like, the crosses, I think the crosses from uh, Master of Puppets, like, came up out of the stage. Oh, that's awesome. And, <laughs> and like, and they had the, the, the chair, the electric chair from Ride the Lightning that, like, came down and they actually had huge Tesla coils. This real. That's and awesome. And they had, like, lightning Was there, like, an the audience chair. there with them? I think that, yeah, I think that they shot the live parts, there, like, had in, somewhere in Eastern Europe, somewhere. That's I think awesome. you guys can correct me in the comments. I can't believe I never even heard of this We as do a not thing. prep about this. Uh, yeah, it totally is a thing. That's crazy. I, huh. But, like, it, I guess it was kind of a flop, which is part of why I think Metallica is great. Some people got mad at me for saying that Metallica sucks live. Um, <laughs> in the comments. I stand by that comment. Uh, I love Metallica, and I think that they suck live. Um well, I think all live music is all. Well, I know, so, so I'm way better than Patrick, so you can talk to him. <laughs> I do. I have many but, videos on my channel talking about live music. Um, too. But, uh, what were, just, is it never still? Y- yeah. It like, was, people just got confused by it, and it kind of flopped, which is what, part of what I think makes make Metallica great, is that the fact that they do every stuff. once in a while they drop a hot turd. In fact, <laughs> right. you could probably make a pretty legitimate argument that since Master... 
since Justice that everything that they've done is a hot turd. Although right. I will say that there is stuff off of Hardwired and stuff off of Death Magnetic that I really like. Yeah, I was actually, in that Metal Edge, I was actually reading in there the article that they had about Metallica because the guy that wrote it was like, he's been like a like a Metallica journalist forever and he like actually knows the guys in the band and stuff. And so he decided for that article, instead of talking to the guys in the band, to talk to their wives um. about the and the p- p- people around them. And he was talking about how they people had just, and actually there's a review of the album too at in the at the at the end of that, because that was one of my favorite things of all the Metal Edge magazines when I would get them. The first thing I read was the reviews of all the albums, and like I never heard any of them. And we're talking back in like 2006, 2007, where you couldn't just go online and hear any album you wanted like that. So like if, if I read a review of an album and it sounded really awesome, then I would know to like keep my eyes out for that album, maybe see if they had like a YouTube video or something out at the time, but reading the the death magnetic review in there they were like people were so excited that finally metallica has released like heavy music again it's thrashy it's like really cool for what it is and that they they that reviewer said that he even thought that some of metallica's best songs were on death magnetic and that he really liked some of them i have said that to some of my friends that are bigger metallica fans than me and i thought that maybe that they were going to kill me (laughs) um but you know whatever That's does it does just out, without talking about it forever does death magnetic have and hardwired to sell do they have pretty good production um there was a whole thing and this is also why metallica is so great um is because like th- because they do stuff so wrong sometimes because like uh there was actually kind of a whole thing and because they are the biggest heavy metal band that ever has and ever will exist because right. of the internet now um but the CD version of Death Magnetic, I'm pretty sure I have this, all of these details correct. If I don't, I take absolutely no pride. I have never studied Metallica. I just happen to like the stuff, and it's right. had a big influence. You don't have on to know life. everything about Metallica. And like, right, and that stupid frickin thing on uh, on for whom the bell tolls. The bass. I, I, I knew there was a bass. Yeah. How did I, I know that really got the, you. The, but anvil, that's all right. the anvil thing, I did not know, and also I like I don't care. Yeah, like, but that kind of stuff is cool though. It, I'm not. It's I'm not saying cool. I expect you to know that, but like from a from a like I even mentioned Depeche Mode recording in in the '80s and using sound effects and samples and stuff. So I think that maybe is why some some of the comments were bringing some of that stuff up. But like that is kind of a cool thing to know, but no, not something I would expect everybody to know. Well, and like I could do a whole four or five hour lecture on my thoughts on the rock and roll mythology. And I'm not like a huge fan of it. I right. don't, we're supposed to be here for the music. And if the, and if the people in the band are cool, like that's like cool. I really don't like music but by people who I think right. are dicks for the most part. But anyway, um, yeah, see, I have no problem. I mean, I can, Oh, I was just about to say something that would get me really in trouble. Yeah, probably. Let's, let's not do that. Uh, what were we talking? The production Death, on Death Magnetic. Death Magnetic. The mastering was so bad. Actually, mm. that might have been like sort oh, of a. You said that last time. The 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 Guitar Hero thing or whatever. That rock yeah, band or something. That they like bait they, yeah whatever. Remastered it or something. They remastered it for the game, and it was way better because mm-hmm. it was over compressed. I remember this was a time. You and I were going to school together the when loudness that record wars. came out. This was sort of after. This was like the tail end of the loudness wars, but it was so bad that like I got it. I like mastering compression. All of a sudden, like I sort of got it. Oh, it helped but you then understand. I, but then I heard it, and I'm like, this makes me feel uncomfortable. Like yeah. I want to listen to it because like I thought the songs were pretty cool, but it was so like compressed with an inch of his life that mm-hmm. like. It was it was basically unlistenable. Yeah, I have a copy of it somewhere. I bought it from I bought it the day it came out on CD and that I'm that's probably the one I'm of all the Metallica albums, that one is probably the the one I would be most curious to hear just because, Saint Anger was t- to everybody else Saint Anger was like so bad that you, like you knew they couldn't do and I've said before, like I think Frantic is like one of my favorite Metallica songs, I I only know the Saint Anger song and Frantic off of that album I've never heard Saint Anger the album. But I really like the Frantic song. I think it's really cool. Okay. And like, I don't have a problem listening to the production of it because it just sounds the way that it has always sounded to me. And I didn't have any expectations of what Metallica really should sound like, other than like Enter Sandman and the stuff off the Black album. And so like, I don't think the snare sounds. I think it sounds very different than every other snare I've ever heard in anything. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Like the whole thing has a very like woody wooden sound to it. Like I don't know. I haven't ever analyzed it. 
Possibly if I heard it now, I'd be like, wow, this is garbage. But at the time when I did hear that stuff, I was in high school when St. Anger came out. And I remember, Fran, tick, 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 tock. And I think, wow, that's, that's so cool. But, uh, but Death Magnetic has to have been like, okay, we have to fix this. We have to correct course, and we have to make an album that sounds fantastic. And even if it was overcompressed, like, it would be really interesting to hear that. Because it's always interesting when a band goes back to their roots or whatever and like does like makes like a heavy album again for the first time in a long time um in flames just did that i i feel my in flames reaction to their new album foregone since we did ride the lightning and i thought that the album was one of the best albums they've ever done in their whole career but i was shocked because people were talking about it the way people were talking about it before i reacted to it before i listened to it i thought it was going to be like all heavy the whole album just heavy the whole thing but it's not it's like every era of in flames put together into like a really good album with really good well-written songs there's a lot of heavy stuff but there's also a lot of really good clean singing and really good melodies and catchy hooks and stuff but then they also still have all the crazy guitar harmonies and guitar harmony solos and all that stuff which is the stuff from metallica ride the lightning that i took from it the most the harmony parts i was like i wasn't expecting that with metallica i guess um which maybe i should if i paid more attention to the black album and you said when you're like that's what metallica is harmonized guitar solos like i uh I guess I just wasn't expecting that so much. Um, but anyway, so I do have an In Flames reaction on the channel. But yeah, Death Magnetic, I'm, I'm interested in. And then Hardwired for Self-Destruct. Wh which album to you has the best? Which which Metallica album sounds the best? All of these things, like th this music that I really like, I, I don't really think about it like that. Right. Um, I mean, I had never really thought about the production of Ride the Lightning very much. Um, right. Although I, which is why it was fun for us to talk about. Yeah, for sure. And like because um, when I first listened to that stuff, like I, I didn't care right. about it. Like, right. And I you just, didn't know. I liked the music, and like I, we probably said. I mean, I was telling people after we shot that video for like a week that, um, like, I was. I forgot how much reverb there was on that record. There is, like, a lot of reverb. Did you talk about it in your class? Uh, I did not. No, not, like, Probably none of your class. kids know Metallica, really. <laughs> no, well, I guess in one class, like, I kind of mentioned it. They're listening it, to but... that Bad Bunny and stuff. Yeah, I guess. Um, I don't even know what <laughs> Dude, they're... shout out to Bad Bunny. He's awesome. Just, just Oh, out. yeah, I guess. But I anyway. I guess I know what that is. Uh, yeah. But, right, I mean, the, the kids don't care about Right, they don't. Metal. Yeah. It would be interesting to see what they would think about something from 1984, the production of it. And so, not, some of them, but. some of them do know what it is. I li and actually, in class, speaking of metal things that I listen to, this is completely off topic. Feel free to cut. Hold on, wait, it's, hold that thought. I just realized that the furnace is on, and I was going to shut the furnace off, and it's right behind us. So I, I'm so sorry for the horrific low humming that's been happening in this video. I'll try to take most of it out. But I'm going to just run upstairs real quick and turn off the furnace. Bear with me for a second as we've just talked for 45 minutes about nothing. We're doing it again. Hold on one second. Okay, seriously, hold on. Save that thought. And since, that. and since while I'm here by myself, yeah, you can talk about I'll, I'll talk about that. There's a new album by Hellripper that just came out that I really enjoyed. I really liked their album that came out before. Again, I'm sorry that I don't like study album names, but... Um, the last Hell Ripper that came out is incredible, and then like I listened to the other album a bunch, the one that came out before. I really liked it. I did not go like research the band at all. I just like thought it was cool, and then so this new one came out, and I immediately looked it up. Absolutely mind blown that it's just one guy, and then I went and immediately bought a shirt, which actually should be at my house right now. I'm very what is excited. It? What, what is it? It's a band called Hell Ripper. It's one guy. Oh, that's cool. I just gave a little review of Hell Ripper. That's awesome. I hope that. Maybe one of these times, Patrick, that you and I can listen to some of the music that I like. And I would we love can that. Get your, we can get your reaction. I would that. love that. I've been thinking in my head about the band Death ever since you mentioned them. Because you were like, you would not like this. Don't listen to this. It's too much for you. And now I really want to listen to a Death song and just like, what the heck is think, this? I don't think you're going to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. We're not here for that. So, okay, we talked about a million things already. Let's get into Master of Puppets. Um, <clears throat> real quick, I was just going to move this over here just so that we had it kind of right in the way of the microphone. I like it there. Yeah, you can see it mostly there. That way it can be nestled against my speaker from 1923. Which was just... Whatever. I'm joke not, about I, being I, old I, or I something stupid. I was going to make a joke about being old. <laughs> 
speaking of being old, this album came out in 1986, which is the year that I was born. Which was the year that I was born. You were born. And also, the year that I'm sure a far superior album to this one, the one my favorite Depeche Mode album of all time, Black Celebration, came out that year. And I was just listening. I was like, hey, I want to hear something from 1986 to compare the production. So I was listening to Black Celebration from Depeche Mode. You know, we got a little... We got a little um, question of lust, question of time. We got a little stripped. We got a little tractor noise in there. And so I'm anxious to see if Master of Puppets can slow up to the standards of Depeche Mode 1986. <laughs> Maybe we can listen to Rain and Blood next time. I know you do, you do love Slayer. And Slayer is a band that I know. I do know that Rain and Blood is Slayer, but I don't know anything else about that. I do love Slayer. Uh, one thing we're going to do in this video that I'm very excited about. This is the debut of Patrick's Fade Outs Chalkboard. Yay! I'll put in some Fake children, noise children some cheering. Confetti. Yay. This is going to be fun. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> so, if we get a fade out, <clears throat> I'll, I'll hold the board up and make a bigger deal about it. We got the chalk right here. Every fade out, you get a line. If you get more than three lines, well... There's eight songs. If we get more than five lines, we stop listening. <laughs> okay? It's a certain percentage every album. Oh, and I do expect to be... That chalk will be half gone by the end of this album, I'm pretty sure. Ride the Lightning, there was only three songs that... Oh, I do need to say this, too. I have listened to Ride the Lightning several times in pieces since we recorded that. I was listening to it earlier today a little bit. It sounds to me way better just like having it blasting out of speakers i have some really nice speakers off off camera here over on the other side of the room and i just turned it up really loud and i was listening to it there's almost no kick <laughs> like the kick is pretty much non-existent you really don't hear the bass that much at all either but there's clear it's clear that there's some like low frequency stuff happening which is why I'm just so dying to get to and justice for all and see how how an album can sound good at all with no bass but um but it, it is interesting listening to it. I, I did notice the reverb a little bit more in the room on his vocals, more so than the headphones, which oh, I know is a little surprising. But I think that's maybe just because I was sort of hyper-focusing on the guitars when we were listening. Yeah. And then we were talking so much over stuff. So I was trying to pay attention to the solos a little bit more. And yeah, they sounded like guitar solos. So um, I just want to say, like, I am not a guitar player. And I understand, like, you are a guitar player. And I have worked with you on music. And we've listened to me about music. And we've talked about music for years. If something has a fancy guitar in it, you are much more likely to be impressed with it. You know, yes. you do not want to listen to Jimmy Buffett playing his guitar while he's singing. That's not impressive to you. And that's fine. You know, but just as an example, nothing wrong with Jimmy Buffett. We love Jimmy Buffett. Our good friend Jason is on tour with Jimmy Buffett right now. But is he really still? Yeah, he's still doing Jimmy Buffett. Wow. He actually just had a tour in, in Florida. and He got to talk to our friend Jared. If you remember Jared? I do remember Jared. But anyway, <clears throat> I know you like guitar stuff. You like more technical things. Uh-huh. Where that is not me. No. I, I'm much more of a, like, if I hear something, I like it immediately. I can tell you exactly why. And it doesn't have to be technical. You know, I can appreciate technical things, I think, in certain areas. But for me, the things things that impress me more is more layering, more complex song arrangements with lots of layers. Hmm. Which is why when we're listening to something that's fundamentally just guitar, bass, drums, vocals, and really nothing else which I talked about this last time too, but I want to just reiterate it for new people. I expect this album to be guitar, bass, drums, vocals, two guitars. I expect it to sound sonically similar to Ride the Lightning, but I want it to sound just a little bit better. Okay. I want a little bit more kick in the production, kick in the mix, and I want there to be, um, I want his vocals to be a little more dry. I don't know if that will happen because this is 1986. We're only two years since Ride the Lightning. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what else. I, I would love a little few more sound effects. I hope there's more acoustic guitars. I really like that. Although I will say, I mentioned it in the video and I was in listening to it again earlier today, man, they really bashed those acoustic guitars. Like they were playing them as, as hard as they could play them. And I do not like that. Okay. I want them to play the acoustic guitars softer and then just have them brought up in volume in the mix. You know, I, I think an acoustic guitar sounds much better when you're playing it soft rather than just twanging. You shouldn't be slapping an acoustic guitar, you know, while you're playing a cool part, which all the acoustic guitar parts were really, really, really cool. For those of you who think that the setup is just way too good, it is absolutely real. There is no way that he actually knows. 
No one knows what. Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, I was expecting some bashing of acoustic guitars now, but um, okay. I'm going to grab my headphones and we'll do one more thing real quick. Everybody look on the table right here. I also really liked the Spirit World record, Death Western. Thought about wearing that shirt today. I listened to that album and I was very disappointed. There was no Western elements to it whatsoever. There's got to be like country guitar on there somewhere. We There's a like little bit. In now. Uh, yeah, well, hold on. Wait. Okay. So today we have something very special. These are my last two. You can't really find these in the store as much. This is my Mountain Dew Flamin' Hot. I'm going to make Chris drink one too. They might be a little chunky because I've had them in the freezer. You didn't like Death Western? I listened to it. I didn't. I didn't care for it. I only. Li I didn't listen to the whole thing, though. To be fair, and I. To be honest, I might like Pagan Rhythms more. Hmm. But the first, their first one. But um, I like them both a lot. I really like Spirit World. So this is spicy hot Mountain Dew. You'll have to see how you feel about it. You know, you said you like spicy stuff. I am not a spicy stuff person. The kick takes a little bit to get there. Oh yeah, yeah that's good. And I had it in the freezer the perfect amount. Look at that slush, baby. That's perfect. And I do want to say, too, like, for the most part, everyone in the comments was, like, genuinely being awesome. So, like, I really appreciate that. And I, I'm i pretty sure... <laughs> most of the people that I've talked to about Metallica, they say And Justice For All. They like as maybe their most favorite album in Metallica's catalog. Or, okay. or, or every time I talk about something, they're like, oh, And Justice is so good. Justice is so good, right? Yeah. But I do think that culturally, don't you think Master of Puppets is like more of like a zeitgeisty thing? Yes. Like, okay, so a little bit more pressure for this one, I feel like. But I'm going to try to do it justice. I'm going to try to pay attention. I'm going to try to, you know, focus on all this. <sighs> Center. Okay. Okay, Battery, Metallica, Master of Puppets, track one from 1986, Battery. Ooh. <laughs> My right headphone always rattles. Ooh. Dead, dead guitars. It sounds dry, dry. I love it. This is great. Are you laughing because... How, how many parts we got going now? We got like four parts going. Right? We have strums on the right, strum on the left, lead part in the middle, lead part off to the side a little. Does that sound right to you? It sounds like it's lacking a lot of high end to me. Well, the kick sounds way better. Well, it just feels so much more round. It's way less tinny, less thin, way better in my opinion. Now I should point out we are list we did decide to listen to the remastered version. This sounds a million times better. Way better. Yeah! Yeah! Background vocals. Gang vocals, yes! Kind of a punky thing too, like, right? A little punky, a little punky attitude. Well, that's what the thrash thing is. I guess, yeah. I guess. Just the fast, the fast gang vocals to me is very, very punky thing. Wow, we're hearing a solo. Hold on, everybody, settle down. It's a fill. Oh, okay, it was just a fill. Okay, okay. <laughs> His vocals sound fantastic. 
It's perfect in the mix. I, we do have, I do have the unmastered, like the original mastered version as well, and we're gonna maybe listen to that at the end and kind of compare a little bit. But, but for now, we're just gonna listen to the entire album, the remastered version. It was remastered in 2017. Wow, you, that bass is really present in the mix. There's like a woofiness to it that definitely wasn't there on Ride the Lightning. Like you can feel the palm muting of the guitars. You couldn't feel it on Ride the Lightning at all. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. This sounds just like Godsmack. It's really awesome. It really is really awesome. <laughs> this is cool. And the, I like how you can, like nowadays records are, like there's like a perfectionism, like a perfect, like there's a perfect feel to the double basing. But this, like you can hear the like, the, what do they call the like, There's like a term for it. You can hear the, the, the differences in his feet and the way it it's not uniform. Oh yeah. For you know? Sure. It's, yeah. It's humanized. The, the galloping. The played. galloping. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love the rawness. I say I always talk about things feeling raw. And I think that maybe you what I mean is like it sounds unpolished in a really good way. Really good way. That's an interesting riff. That's weird. Like, it's really simple, but not. Like, rhythmically, that was really interesting. Pause it. <laughs> that was phenomenal. Hold on. That, that was that was so good. That might be the best opening track to an album ever. Really? That okay. Is, that is that is my that is my favorite opening track. Ever. That's awesome. And like maybe my favorite Metallica song. Really? Like this so the hmm, now I'm super hypersensitive to the solos. Yeah. But that solo section is awesome because it's not like the guitars are just like playing eighth note power chords. Like it's like it's written and it's got that breakdown where uh, right, James there's different stops. sections you can follow. It is absolutely wah soaked, which is you Well that's know. what I was gonna ask. Like it definitely I was joking around with I said Godsmack. <laughs> but like when I do think of Godsmack, I think of like the wah heavy wah stuff which like most of the bands that i listen to do not ever use wah pedal when they're soloing or, or, or at all ever to my knowledge but like this there's just like a there's it it, it has this certain feel to it that is really interesting like it, uh, this is so stupid but it like makes me think of like driving fast like driving a car fast yeah and i don't know why like i don't i don't know if i've seen images of that kind of a thing before or something i don't think i've ever seen that with metallica but I mean, obviously, fast music, you're going fast, so fast music makes sense. But there's just something about that, like, wah pedal sound that's just, like, I don't know. On this, At the same time, it just feels so, like, American to me. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but, like, okay. like, it, like all, so much of the metal I listen to has, like, the Scandinavian or Celtic feel to it. Oh, And, like, yeah. th that is, like, so far from that, you know? But also, like, it's so different from... Like, there's not very many metal bands from the United States that I like at all. Like, very, very, very... There's actually not very much music from the United States that I like that much. Like, I would say probably 80% or more of all the music that I really like a lot is all from Europe. And then there's a there's a chunk of it that I really like from Japan. But so much of it is just from Europe. And then a little bit from South America as well. And this is spanning all genres. I'm not just talking metal. But um, but they're, they're just... 
uh, you and I've had this conversation before about how I just think that American or United States metal music to me, what that's always meant when you hear about a metal band for the United States, like they go more for the aggression and less of the like the technical, maybe not technical, because obviously that was technical and they weren't being like ag as aggressive as possible. They were being fast, but I didn't necessarily feel like it was like aggressive or, or angry at all. You know, when I think about and I'm not comparing this, but when I think about something like Slipknot, right, like they're a huge band from the United States. And I'm not saying that Slipknot is Metallica or anything like that. But like when you think about Metallica or you think about Lorna Shore or any of these other bands, like it's like all about being aggressive and it's about being like 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 mean if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. I'll talk to the camera instead because you're just looking at me like, what the <laughs> hell are you talking about? There's like this aggressiveness to it that I didn't feel there. Here, I felt like a playfulness, like a fun. Like there's like a fun feeling, like a fun vibe. Like, look at what we can do. We can play really fast. We have these like shouty gang vocals, which you know they had so much fun and were probably drunk off their asses while they were recording them in the studio. Like you can just picture that happening. You can picture it in the studio. And like, I love that kind of stuff. And I've said before on my channel many times that I think background vocals and gang vocals and harmony vocals are the most underappreciated aspect in all of music. A really a song can be brought up to another level. The only thing that's close is auxiliary percussion because people do not give enough credit to auxiliary percussion stuff. But that's one of those things that everybody likes. They just don't know that they like it. I know, but that's why I'm saying underappreciated. I'm not saying that it's. Yes. I'm not saying that it's more important than anything else. I'm just saying underappreciated. Everybody can listen to that listen to that guitar solo and be like, "That's a phenomenal guitar solo." It was panned right in the middle. They didn't really have any harmony parts with that. I don't think. Mm -hmm. Right. It was panned right in the middle. God, so, there's so many things I want to say. We cannot do this no, after we, every we song. Can't, we can't, but now we're going to listen to Master of Puppets. Okay, Master of Puppets. This is the title track Let me restart. the record, Master Now, of this is the one that I definitely will, will, the only one on here that I recognize any of the songs at all. Okay. Um, but the song titles, at least. Um, but Master of Puppets, I know this, I know the dun-dun-dun, and I know the master, master. That's, that's pretty much what I know. Okay. And it's eight minutes long. So when when we heard this, these rhythm guitars, were they recorded by James and Kirk? I don't know. Because I would be curious to know. I know some metal bands have like the lead lead rhythm guitarist, and they do all the rhythm guitars, and then they might have like a lead guitarist that does lead the solos. But I doubt that's what they did. But I I don't know. I'm sure someone in the comments will let us know. Like I, probably more likely than not, it was like Lars is on one or. Uh, James is on one side and Kirk's on the other side, right? There is something funky about the snare. Like, it sounds like when the snare... I think there's a gate on the snare, like a strong gate, and when the snare hits, you can hear a little bit more of the cymbals and kick. I thought that last time, I don't know. Interesting reverb there. Okay, there. We, okay, that's interesting. So that's like a flange effect on a secondary vocal part. That line. Can we talk about how badass this album artwork is for just a second? Hold on, I'll just I'll just pause it. I just I was gonna do this earlier and I forgot. This is such cool album art co cover album artwork. This is awesome. And then you look at this and it's incredibly lame. But hey, don't worry about that. Mm. Look at this. This is 1986 right here in a in a jar. Okay. <laughs> but but this that is so bad badass. It is. It's. I mean, it's legitimately awesome. Now I was gonna ask you this last time. Is Metallica a political band? I, 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 not overtly. 
I mean, because they, they, and I, maybe political, but like, would they be like a, um, like, obviously here, I've, we're not going to, I'm not going to do this whole thing right now, but like, it's, first of all, the logo in like the, the marble yeah. is really cool. And then I've seen this image probably hundreds of times over the years. I never once noticed the hands up here. I was going to ask you that. Like, I how never long noticed did it that. Take you looking at it. To, I mean, until you notice years the hands? until until I was looking at it earlier today, online, and I saw the hands, and I was like, "That is so cool!" Because I didn't even notice the strings. You know, I've I've just seen this image in pop culture. You know, I've never held it in my hands really. I mean, I did get this for you, I guess, and I held this at one point, but I wasn't paying attention to it. But like, how cool is that? And the fact that it goes on in the distance, and it's so cool. You have a little dog tag here. That's so awesome. I love how the it's it's stupid, but just the the grass is growing up around it. Ugh, it's cool. It's really cool. It is. Really it's cool. really cool. And I love the ride the lightning one too. We didn't even talk about that last time, but it's neat to have this here. But how they have the more like metallic symbol, and then here it's it's stone. It's like it's it's marble like stone. I wonder what's going to happen because like. I know they changed their logo, right? For or they didn't change the logo, but like the death magnetic thing. Oh no, I guess it is this font, huh? But the I <clears throat> that logo stays the same though. Yeah, the logo has always been the same. Maybe it maybe it looks a little bit different. Like the lines are a little bit more square. Again, the graphics design guys can comment on that. But I really like how these two look together because they are like the same layout. Yeah, like the oh. font of the like that that makes it really cool to me. I agree. 100%. But we're listening. We have paused the music, in case you didn't know. They know. Oh. It stopped. Well, if the music doesn't get allowed on, they don't. But anyway, oh, we're going to oh. continue on. Well, it's the, the minute I hit the button, I'll take the words off screen. Oh, okay. So, like, they will they'll they should know. That's okay. a good... I'm glad you thought of that. Though. Okay, anyway. Sorry, we'll get back to it. We're going to continue. It. Sorry. I just... I'm so excited now. <laughs> Really, the snare doesn't sound very good. It's very thin and small. There's no body to it whatsoever. I mean, it's serving its purpose. I, I, I don't think it sounds bad, but I think it could sound better. Normally when you have a, well, I'll save my thoughts for afterwards. It's not sample replaced. No, nope. Like they definitely boosted the highs on the snare, <laughs> which is fine. But the rest of the kit sounds nice and like tight. The snare just when he hits the snare, it sounds I don't know. Huh. That was cool. Put it up, put it up with the toms. The toms sound very wooden too. Like they're it's very dry, and uh, I really like it. I like the way the toms sound. It sounds like he's maybe like rushing them a little bit. Like everything sounds kind of like bleh, rather than like, but. That might just be Lars, I don't know. I just, this is like a thousand times better. What the hell? Pitch shifting? What is this, 2012? What the hell? Are we gonna get a little auto-tune coming in next? Okay, this is cool. I love this whole song, but I think this is my favorite part. Dude, I love that tone. That's so cool. We got a tone that sounded so much... You have a guitar solo that's like this on the last Primal album. Shit, this is awesome. Oh my gosh. This isn't in Stranger Things. <laughs> The stranger thing is just this dude like big lizard shredding the whole time. I think, if I remember correctly. You couldn't have monsters attacking to this. It's, this has to be in slow motion for this.
Oh, cool. Build it up even more. Master, master, you can hear the room. You can hear the room that they were in. And I love that. Ooh, they had, there's a low octave vocal there. That now we're getting into that. Now I lay me down to sleep and pray the Lord my soul to keep. Okay. Did they record these guitars in stereo? Like with two microphones? I have never thought about that before. I bet they did. He likes to go up. Like he likes to, like you're kind of like, right? Right? I mean, I don't know if that's like a standard guitar solo thing, but. See now this is, this kind of stuff is cool too, where it's just like a complex riff. Oh, that's cool. That little, that little extra diddly diddly in there. Very melodic, all of this. Back to the core riff of the song. Again, Lars trademark cymbal stops, right? Yeah. You gotta stand up when you do those. Mm. His singing is so much better too, I think. Much more defined choruses in both songs. I, yeah, I love me my song structuring. He had to hitch up his britches there a little. He went to a higher register than he's done so far. Do any other songs change key? I'm sure in solo parts they probably do that, but this one modulates in the in the verse. It goes from E to F sharp. Was this one of the first songs you learned how to play on the guitar? No. You didn't grab a guitar the first time and start playing this. Dude, that, that's so cool, but like if a band had like low pitched laughter in it nowadays, you get laughed off the stage. Like, okay, that was awesome. <laughs> that was so good. Uh, I can't believe that I haven't heard more of that. Like the, that, mid that middle section is like, I mean, the riff is so good. It's kind of, we're not going to be able to talk about this as much as the end because we're taking time in between. But like, well, we won't have to. As we won't have to. The main riff is freaking awesome, and it's iconic. And like, right, like you mean the ba 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 ba. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. And like, what a down picking exercise for the guitar players out there. I mean, I have done that for the last forever till I mm -hmm. could like sort of play a song. I still probably can't play it at the tempo it's at the record. Neither can Metallica. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but that's like so cool. But like. It's sort of an anti-chorus, mm. right? Like, oh yes, I mean, it's, it's it almost sounds more like a pre-chorus than a chorus, yeah, right? And like, right? like kind of like two pre-choruses stitched together, mm -hmm. sort of. Um, but maybe that's almost more like because they're what they're going for is the ref a more of a refrain than a chorus, which a refrain is a repeating musical part. Well, a, a chorus is a repeating, uh, like the hook of the song repeated. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's still like catchy, but like, no, I know. I'm just saying, like. The part you think of coming away from this is the bop, 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 bop. Like, that's the part you, th to me, for me. Yeah. Now, that's the only part I knew beforehand, so maybe that's why. But, like, I don't, the, the yes, when it changes, when the guitar changes the riff for the actual chorus, when, uh, when they do the, um, when that master part comes up, what is the chorus, actually? It's the, um, 
Right, the guitars go up to like a higher register. Yeah, they play like Which, kind of like a weird, yeah, like not heavy riff. Yeah, and it's not a, it's not a like this. It's more of a, um, it's more of a choppy, technical thing. And so, yeah, you're right. It is kind of anti-chorus in that way. It's not the catchy, big, bombastic anthem. But it's, I mean, it is, it is. But awesome. it's fantastic. But the, the center section of that song is the oh, one. Oh, it was gorgeous. It. It's, that's what does it the, for me. I, the, I commented on, on, um, I commented on Ride the Lightning that I really did not care for the guitar tone that they had when they were playing more like clean electric guitar. Mm. I thought it sounded a little, little farty, you know. Yeah. And and the whole record, this whole record sounds just miles, in my opinion, miles better than Ride the Lightning. Ride the Lightning was like, th- this is so much better. <laughs> I can't even explain it. I not even the fact that it, like it sounds sonically better. Like I like the approach way more. And I don't know how much that has to do with the ma- the remaster, but like I love the like roundedness of everything. Yeah. This is is such a warm sounding mix. And when it first started, I thought it was missing high frequencies. You know, when it first started, I would look probably confused. I was a little worried about this, this what we're listening to, like if I screwed it up somehow, you know. But no, it just, I it took my ears a second to acclimate to what, what they wanted me to hear it that way. And then when his vocals came in, uh, I was like, okay, I get this. This sounds great. So, okay, let's move on. Let's move on. The thing that should not be. The thing that should not be. Okay. Also, two for two, not no fade outs. Also, I'm curious if we're going to have an instrumental track as well, because that last song, Call of Cthulhu or whatever it was, was my most disappointing track from Ride the Lightning. Okay. This is another Godsmack song. Ah! Dude, I love it. I love the slower tempo stuff. I love it. It's so chunky. The guitars just sound so good. Like, they're so meaty. You know what I mean? Oh, God, they're so good. It is a little woofy, but I don't think it's bad. The bass has no high end at all. It's just low frequency woof. And that's fine. It's doing, it's serving its purpose. The sustain is really nice too when they just hold stuff out, you know? Because sometimes it can be super. Hold on, I gotta pay attention more. Because that sounded funky to me. those simple riffs. I'm just a simple guy. The lyrics are kind of stupid. Really? I mean, I don't know. Maybe not stupid. It's fine. This is like, it's, sometimes it's very like cliched metal, you know? But, 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 but you can't say that because this is probably where all those cliches and stereotypes come from, you know? Was there a lot of, well. I got a call from someone, which is very rare, but I'm just gonna text the person recording a reaction right now. No, no, you're, well, unless it's, unless we're coming up against something really good. Hold on, it's my cousin and he wouldn't call me unless he had some, he probably found something really awesome at like an auction or something. And he wants to, uh, Sorry. <laughs> that I, that is a little weird. This, this 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 the abrupt switch back to the you know the, the sort of clean or whatever. 
Oh, I think so makes it cool. Yeah. This this song is not catchy. Like they're not going for catchy. No, it's song. heavy. Right. Yeah. It's different. Different. I love those delays when they put that like blooming delay. Okay, what are we gonna do here? Whoa. Okay, this is like what they did this kind of stuff at the end of Master of Puppets, at the end of the song. This sort of like guitar sounds being brought up in the mix a little bit, very backgroundy. Oh, verse three. Or half a verse. Nope, straight up verse three. Okay. It's just so metal, you know? It's just <laughs> hunter of the shadow that rises in the cradle born, whatever. It's just like, okay. That's what makes it awesome, Patrick. I, yeah, I guess, yes. I, I'm not saying it negatively. I, I definitely do not like this song as much at all. Okay. I really like the chunky riff, but yeah, it's, it's so weird to have a chorus that the get that like you're halfway into the music of the chorus before the like vocal thing comes in. Ah. Oh, okay. I don't know if I've thought about that. That's before. cool. That is cool. And that's, I'll be a little bit more forgiving with that one because they just did that. Okay, I'll, that's not as bad as it could be. You know, I was listening to Ride the Lightning earlier and their Fade to Black was on and the guy's just soloing like a madman and it just fades out. Old West, love it. This is more Old West than is on that Western album. Awesome though. Those low notes are so cool. Ooh, okay. I, there's like a flangy chorus effect on it too. Soaking. There is reverb on everything, but the dry signal is 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 more present. Like it's not like they put reverb. Like there's the dry signal is always there, and I appreciate that so much. Okay, let's hear James sing. It's 
some harmony vocals in there. That's nice. That was like four get four vocal parts there. He doubled the he doubled the harmony and the lead. Oh, this is sanitarium. Oh, I've heard that word associated with them, but the vocal harmony parts. Does Metallica swear in any of their music? No, on these records. I don't think so. It's cool. I mean, he just said the D word, so. Damn it. <laughs> it just <laughs> the D <deal. laughs> I'm gonna I, I don't wanna lie. This I'm also not super crazy about this song. Okay. The first two songs blew me away. And maybe I'm gonna be one of those schmucks that only likes the songs that like everybody likes or whatever, but this is cool. I love the guitar tone on the solos. Like you can hear everything that he's doing. You can hear everything. Guitar's playing the vocal melody or a version of it. It's always hard for me to notice stuff like that. Or the vocal was singing the guitar melody from earlier. <laughs> This feels like if this could fade out. Like they could just repeat this part a bunch and fade out. Oh. This this is more what Ride the Lightning was. Just half a song and then guitar riff with some solos and then we'll just guitar riff more. That was an interesting second half of that so that section there. Because it wasn't so much a solo, but it kind of was. And this is cool. This kind of like stop. I don't even know what you call this. I mean, like retardando there and like all sorts of cool stuff. Okay. Okay, so two songs in a row that I felt they were going less for being like catchy. 
Okay, disposable heroes. Sounds a little louder. It does. The frequency response is just different on this. Yeah. Like the symbol crashes sound different too. A little more. The guitars are more high endy. I didn't. I huh. Wah pedal. Guitar in the middle and off to the side a little. Like that bass today would be so massive, you know, and it's just this little thing in there. Yeah, this definitely sounds like it was recorded like at a different time or something. Lots more reverb on the toms. Is this an instrumental? No. No? Okay. Oh, this one's eight minutes too. Eight, eight eighteen. Okay. Taking every fiber of my being not to go like this. I I can love this. So <laughs> nice. This just sounds sonically very different. Yeah. Like it still is. It's interesting. So is, th is there like a theme to this album of like military something or not? Okay. Uh, What an interesting rhythm there. You know? It's just an interesting rhythm. Oh, yeah. Me That's vocal, like... vocally. I mean, they, they drag out the back to the front, like, more. But the, oh, they're all doing it. Interesting. I, I think maybe one of the coolest things about Metallica is that James Hetfield plays guitar and sings this stuff at the same time. That's like, hard for me to I'd, con. It's so awesome. Like, Master of Puppets... I tried a thousand times. The lead guitars are way low in this song. Lower. Whoa. <laughs> there it is.
That's cool. This is cool. This part's cool. They, a lot more vocals on this album. A lot more sections with the vocals. Yes. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. It's, it's, I will say it, it's interesting. I can appreciate all the fast picking stuff is like so timed perfectly. Just from the little stuff we've done together, like knowing that they couldn't move every, every transient, you know, it is impressive. I mean, it's really cool. And there's just something about the drums too. It's, I really like it. It's weird. Like, I, if I if I just listen to the kick, I'm like, I don't know if that sounds very good. If I just listen to the snare, I'm like, I don't know. And in this song, the snare but is the way lower. Thing but, but just the whole that's... mix is just like, I get it. Like, it's doing what it needs to do really well. Back to the front. That's so weird. It's weird. There's like a beat that's longer. <laughs> that was like 90s. There's like grunginess to some of this too, which is really weird because this is like seven years before grunge. I love that they went back to the chorus here at the end of the song. That's great. It's hard to anticipate what the song's gonna do, you know? That is what makes it great, right? Yeah. I, but like sometimes when you're listening to stuff, you can like, but it's hard. Like, you know, part of me wants to like move along with the song a bit, but like you don't know what's gonna happen next. Great, that's awesome. <laughs> Harmonies the last time. Oh, that was great. Okay, I, okay, yeah, you got a control pot. Yeah, that's so funny that you say the back to the front thing, because there's, uh, my brother and I and another friend, we used to work together, mm -hmm. like doing stuff with our hands, and. uh Every time that anybody would say, like, you know, I'm going to go back to whatever, we'd say back to the front. Like, <laughs> at, like all the time. Like, yeah. we'll force it into conversations <laughs> because, like, it was, it was such a thing. Uh, well, you know, it is interesting, too, because, like, the, the background vocals were much more present than the lead vocals there. And they really have been throughout the album. We've only, this is only the second song we've got with the gang vocals in it, I think. Okay. I mean, unless you I'll count you on that. Yeah, I think so. Cause it's just battery and this, that song, um, kind of master puppets. You, I guess, but not to the extent, not like the children of Bodom style, like five people, all, all band members in the studio shouting, or and at least super, that I remember. Super wide. Yeah. You can really hear the room in it. But not here. All. Yes. Here. Yes. Right? Like, and I almost wonder how much mastering affected that. Because if there's one thing I learned from mastering my own album last year, it's that anything you had over here, just just chilling on the sides of the spectrum, <gasps> you better hope you liked what it was. Because when you bring it up in mastering, everything that was subtle on the outsides is now prominent on the outsides. Yeah. And I just no, I'm sure that like the greatest mastering engineer in the whole universe was brought in to master all this Metallica stuff, just like they were for the Depeche Mode and all these like huge important bands that are getting their stuff remastered. Leper so this is Leper Messiah, which is interesting because obviously Jesus healed the leper and Jesus was the Messiah. So clearly this song's going to be about Jesus. Uh, James Hatfield confirmed uh, follower of the faith confirmed. Five? 
Is this song in 5 4? <laughs> oh, I love this though. This is back to the way the other songs sounded. This one does I, not sound the way that, that last song did. I kind of was thinking that maybe that Desperate Heroes song or Disposable Heroes was more like Battery was mixed, but then I don't think so because Battery was very similar to Master of Puppets. This is awesome. Like that reverse stuff. How did they do that? With the tape or did they actually make a... I'm sure. Sometimes it feels like Lars is, is he doesn't want to be going the speed that they're going. Does that make sense? Whether he wants them to speed up or slow down, it's hard to tell. <laughs> but, but sometimes it's just like, it's right on the cusp of being just too slow or too fast. It still fits acceptably into what they're doing, but it's just not quite like to the grid, <laughs> you know? There, you can really hear the double bass kind of, and the the yeah. Has he been doubling his vocals the whole time? I don't think so, right? Is that doubled? I don't think so. No. I don't think it's been doubled really that much at all. But it feels so thick. It does. I think it might just be the way he sings. This is great, though. I, this this song is cool right away. I like this one a lot. Oh, I get it. This might not be the most happy religious song ever, huh? <laughs> I just watched episode eight of The Last of Us with, with David. You know, you know. So this song would really fit in well with that. Not that I'm like focusing on the lyrics that much. I, it's so rewarding when they do something simple because it makes it feel different, you know? But like, you know that they could be doing things more complicated, but they, it's an intentional choice when they just do that, uh, like that, like just going down the scale like slow, like, I don't know. This, I guess everything just feels a little bit more intentional to me this time, and less like, I don't know. I definitely think that they use more than one microphone to record the guitar cabinets or whatever. Because sometimes I'm just hearing these interesting Because you can, you know, you can record a guitar amp with more than one microphone and then pan the amp microphones a little bit to make things feel a little bit wider, but not necessarily... Yeah. Hold on. Okay, so there the kick sounds way different. But it's also going with the bass guitar a little bit more. Like, they may have added a little high frequencies to the bass here. I love that though, that's really cool. Da -da 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 now there's a lot more body to this, to the lead. I they I think they use more than one microphone to record some of this. Which is totally a standard thing. Like I'm not saying that's yeah. abnormal or anything. I've really noticed it with some of the some of the synth solos. Pretty cool. I like it. Like it almost is hard to tell what he's doing sometimes. Like it kind of all mumbles together, like you know. But 
Oh, he was very angry there for a second. <laughs> Ooh, Phil Collins. Yep. Yeah. Is this how the song started, I think? Oh, yes. Like the, ah. Oh. You know, we work on stuff sometimes and you cut out those parts in between. They just can't, can't don't know how to end a song, do they? Well, they do know how to end a song. They end it like four times. It's like watching The Return of the King. You know, you're about ready to get out of your seat in the theater, and then they, you know, go back to the Shire. Okay, okay. Well, gonna, <laughs> and then they're going, okay, you no, know, they're going to get on the boat and go to the Undying Lands. And then the credits, okay, okay now we can go. <laughs> but the, I'm not complaining about that. I think that's cool. But, um, yeah. Did you have anything you wanted to add, or? No. Okay, I like. I could. I mean, I could say so many things, but I'm trying to save a few things. But I. I that was interesting. I liked that song a lot more than the, the two, the three really that came before it. I. I thought. Um. I like disposable heroes more than I'm looking at this. I, sanitarium and the thing that should not be. I was not super impressed with. Then I disposable heroes was confusing because it was so different sounding which was interesting, but once I got over it, plus it was really long. That one had really cool fast riffs. But I Leper Messiah was really cool. I like that one. Yeah, that's like that. Okay, so now we're on to the penultimate track, right? Mm -hmm. The second to last, Orion. It, I swear that said Onion, it looked like to me from here. but If you squint a little bit, yeah. Okay, so Orion. Good Lord, this one's 826, 827. Oh, hold on, it's not going. Orion. Yes, I believe that's how you pronounce Orion. it. Orion. <laughs> Put your phonetic spellings Shh. down in the comments. I hear an organ. Keyboards confirmed. Keyboards confirmed. I like this song the best. <laughs> Give me that rotary organ, baby. Play, play the lowest note you got. It's a badass sound. It is a badass sound. It's not an organ. It's gotta be. It's not. That's not an organ? No. Is it a bass? Yes. I wish it was an organ. That sounded just like a rotary organ. It does, and that's probably. However they did that is awesome. Yeah. It sounds really cool. It is, that is, there's very, your Depeche Mode stuff right very there. Very 80s, that flock of seagulls. Dude, and it's still going. That's cool. You know, that interval is so cool. I don't know. You know, from... That's cool. It just sounds cool. I'm, it's probably not some crazy musical thing. It's just probably really scary, like but a fourth or whatever. But it is out of sort of out of left field like, this oh, type man. of riff, yeah. Dude, I love that organ thing. It's so cool. Interesting. Like you have to kind of reach into the mix to hear that, to pull it out, you know? It's low, but I think it's low intentionally. It's bass. That's a bass? Well, how many things is the bass doing in this song? Go back to doing your organ. It's all, it's all bass. The whole thing is no, bass? Well, I mean, the all the stuff you're going to ask questions about. Okay, okay. Oh. With two minutes. And that block. Oh. Right there, right? Is that where the five comes in? I think, is that? Probably. I'm not, I'm not counting. Oh, I'm horrific at counting stuff. Is this an instrumental? Yes. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, this is a million times better than Call of Cthulhu or whatever. That's kind of a bummer. You know, if you're only going to make eight eight songs and there's an instrumental track, you only made seven real songs, you know? 
<laughs> oh, okay. I like how this song's just kind of trucking along, though. You know, like... Like they're not in any hurry to go anywhere. Just adding parts. I imagine live they could do this as long as they wanted and just let them solo for as long as... I'm sure they have it all planned out, but like... That's like a little rock and roll in here, you know? That's a lot of the Kirk stuff yeah. anyway is... Yeah, since I don't know that much about guitar soloing and stuff, like, I think I tend to lead towards guitar solos that are a lot more, like, bluesy influenced rather you than... you the biggest Kirk Hammett fan ever. <laughs> well, is that what I was, I was going to ask, though? Is that kind of where it comes yeah, from? Yeah, I mean, Kirk, I like, Kirk Hammett's just sped up blues riffs. Yeah? Or a lot of the time. Okay, hold on. Okay, that I can tell is bass. Yes. Are, were they doing the like pluck a note and then turn the knob thing there a little? I don't think, I don't think that's what that was. This is awesome. Very prominent. Oh, that bend. <laughs> This is bluesy. I called that before it happened. <laughs> I, I was going to point this out last time, but since people were talking about solos so much, I wanted to, to point out my favorite band in terms of solos. It is a band called Poison Black. Um, they have songs that are six, seven minutes long, and they'll, they're heavy, but the songs I love from them are their slow songs. They just do these just as slow as humanly possible, just trudging along, but they have a keyboard player who plays like lo lots of low piano and organ and stuff to just fill space. And then the guitars are free to just put miles between notes. It's it's so cool. And I love that band a lot. It's The, the singer is from the, a very famous band called Sentenced from Finland, but look up the band Poison Black and really any of their albums, but specifically their last three albums are uh, stuff kind of stuff I'm talking about. This, is, this reminds me of that a lot, this kind of thing. I, I like this a lot. Again, like, it's, you can see how this band made the Black Album. You know? Yeah. We're it's just like it. someone, We're it's just there. like someone was like, don't, just don't do as much, but just take what you do like this and m make it more accessible, you know? I, I think this sounds probably better than the Black Album, though. Like, the Black Album does not necessarily sound phenomenal. The the remaster is basically all kick. It's like the most enormous, massive kick of all time. And I think it sounds really good for what's happening, but the guitars are not this, this. The guitars are not chunky, heavy, heavy, you know? They're not like that. Which it makes me wish that album was mixed more like this. Because this is, the, the metal of this is so good. I know I'm not paying attention to this, and I should be, so I will start right now. Bass. It's pretty common for metal bands to do an instrumental song and use that as the thing to like show off, right? To do, to do the to show off, I guess, like your musicianship in instrumental yeah. songs. Yeah. I mean, because that's you can play this and then like. You know, okay, look, here's the drummer, and the drummer does his solo for a while, and like, oh, here's the bass player, bass player does his solo for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's a common live thing, right? Kind of. Or you, you just Maybe band, not. do most bands just fit that into a song, like a well known song, and then they just play the bridge for a long time? Okay. I guess do either way. Sorry, this solo's really good. He's really playing that guitar fast. <laughs> It's like this this album I'm like waiting for the fast parts to come back in. Whereas with the other album I was like, oh let's do more fade to blacks. Let's let's do more for whom the bell tolls, you know? Hold on. I don't care. They ain't gonna do nothing else. 
It would shock me if they do. And even if they do, this is obviously fading out. This is obviously fading out. Still, though, they're on a good, they're on a winning record. Like, although if you're going to make an eight song album and two fade out, that's not good. That's, that's 20% failure rating. I would say it's probably 25, but you know, you're the math guy. Oh, wait, I was thinking two out of, I was thinking out of 10. I'm not the math, math guy. Math I was I know. never the math that guy. Was the joke. First day of class, this guy gets in there and is like, "We know everything." And remember, I rose my hand, and now Mister, our professor was like, "Does anyone know what uh, speed is, or something? The speed of this is, or something?" And I'm like, "I can't even remember it now, but like, velocity. It was mass of time, speed, or something, or whatever." I was so excited, I knew something, and that wasn't what he asked at all. <laughs> and you with your stupid Snoopy stocking cap and your purple, your purple shirt with the hole in the shoulder. Oh, God. You wore the same clothes every day for a whole year. Did I? No. That Probably hat you wore forever, that Snoopy hat. Did, even in the summertime. And I always liked that Snoopy hat, too, because my mom loves peanuts so much. That was the first thing I noticed. I don't even know what that thing's like. And also, you're one of the few people that I know that's legitimately taller than me, too, which is not a lot of people are, are taller than 6'2", you know, 6'1 and a half, which is what I am. Yeah. You're, you're got to be, what, 6'3", at least? Sure. I don't know. Okay, anyway, sorry. Okay. Last track of... Okay. Master Puppets. Okay, Damage Inc. I've heard Damage Inc. referenced before, but I've I've never heard any of it. I see it's only five and a half, so we got a good pop song going on here. I'm assuming we're gonna get a nice slow pop song to end the album. This is the ballad, huh? Yeah, there's lots of synthesizers. <laughs> Dude, I was so excited with that organ on the last song, and you destroyed my hopes. <laughs> It was a, the coolest it's bass thing I've ever heard. Organ, I agree. Like, that makes it cool. I agree. I want to know how they got that sound. And like I assume it's like a, a flangey thing. Sorry. Okay, so this is definitely the that is, yeah. guitar knob. Really cool. I've heard so many albums that do this kind of crap on the last song, and it's the entire time. It's like a 13-minute track with just this for 13 minutes. That pisses me off when a band does that. Like, why waste my time? You're just padding the length of the album out, and I'm not good with that. I assume they won't do this, do that, because it's stopped now, so. Rant over, but man, I hate it when bands do that kind of crap. Lord Huron with the track on their last album. Pfft, get out of here with that crap. Hey, the organ's back. Sad, right? Okay, this is making reminding me something of very heavy, some, something very familiar. Ah! Sometimes the guitars just feel a little bit more present, and I love that. Like I'm sure that when they are mixing it, or when they're you know they, okay, the vocals are coming in, move the faders down a little bit, you know, like the, the good old cleat tactic of you know. Uh, I can't tell when the vocals are coming. This is awesome, though. You gotta listen to a minute-long intro where they're not doing Jack beforehand, but... Sorry, that's, that kind of stuff makes me mad, but it was cool. Okay, sorry. That was cool. I love it. I love the scoops. <laughs> Dude, it's so cool. And obviously this song is a call to Peace and Love Incorporated by the band Information Society from 1983. Peace and Love Incorporated. Peace and Love Incorporated, right? Yeah. I love that. That's cool. Yeah. 
That's so badass. It's so cliche and stupid, but like it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean though? Yeah. You know? Like every every local metal band ever does that kind of crap in their stuff. <laughs> oh, hold on, this is cool. The riffs all feel so tight. Like there's no looseness to them. Um, Okay, here, here, sorry, I'm focusing on the wrong thing. I was gonna say the riff there, let, like it's not super palm muted now. Like you can't hear the space between the notes. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's just what I was thinking of this whole. So when this stuff is happening, is it Kirk and then another Kirk and then another Kirk or is James soloing sometimes in between? Like do this trade off? Yeah, it, this is, all the Weebly stuff is Kirk. Right, but do they trade off solos, though? Not, not on stuff like this. It's just, just Kirk for the yeah. most part. Okay. This song sounds sonically the exact same as Battery and Master of Puppets. Oh. Like... Like, it, it, those three songs were recorded and mixed on the same day. You know, the other songs, some of them, don't sound that uniform. Maybe it's just the style that they're playing, maybe? But, like, I kind of... Do you say a bad word there? I don't think so. Okay. He was talking about buckets. I think I think that might actually be the word. I don't know. You know, it could be. And that's the end of the album? Just that? Yeah. That's, I don't know. I wish, kind of wish it would have been a bit more to end the album. That's you know? how you're supposed to feel at the end of a record. Yeah, no, I that's know probably you true. don't think that. No, that, no. I, that's in this, why Slayer records are great. In this case, I, I can see that. Like, I, I, I don't necessarily hate the wanting a little bit more. It, um, I don't know. It's just, we, to talk about like a classic album like this, I guess I just kind of expected there to be some like crescendo. And it wasn't really a crescendo. It was just kind of like another song, you know. If they would have had the previous it track, is fast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One of only like two. Well, there was other faster ones, but like I said, sonically to me, this one was very similar to Battery and Master of Puppets. Yeah. Like very, very much so. And I don't know if it's because the riffs were similar or not, but yeah, both that similar. song in particular, though, I was really noticing like the palm muting is. And again, I'm not a guitar player. But, like, <clears throat> everything is very precise. Obviously, what they're doing is very precise. But, like, they, with a lot of the guitar riffs, it doesn't feel like, like, every note is its own singular, very short note. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. With the palm muting. Because uh -huh. you can palm mute a guitar in such a way that everything kind of connects together. Uh -huh. You know, it's not open an open string. That obviously sounds like, you know, an open string guitar. But, like, I don't know. I guess I was just focusing on that while we were listening to that and I was like listening to the riff and like hyper focusing on that and I was just like man this is so clean like it's obviously it's a professional whatever like it should sound that way but like it's so clean and the way the guitar riffs like the way that they were writing that at least because a lot of it was really fast and it could have been sloppy but it's not really sloppy no it's but it's sloppy. not perfect either and that's kind of where the the when I say it sounds more raw yeah. than something that's produced today, we talked about that a lot in the Ride the Lightning video. We talked about modern metal production techniques and stuff and about how you can cheat a lot of things. We've done it on records before. And how this, it feels so organic, Yes, maybe, in a good way, in a really good way, and round. So, but, but before we do sort of overall thoughts, should we listen to... Do we want to listen to Battery or Master of Puppets, original master? Remaster of Puppets. How could we not have made that joke earlier? Come on. Somebody else has Shit. really done that. No There's one's ever thought of that ever. No, no, we're nope. probably the first people to ever do Remaster of Metallica. Puppets. I think so. Well, they just are a new band from two years ago. Yeah, I know, right? Remember? They got made for Stranger Things. Yeah. Um, 
I think that we should do final thoughts and then do the remaster. Okay. I think okay. that makes more sense. Okay. In that case, then I'm going to take my headphones off just because I need a little break. I won't. You don't have to if you don't want to. Okay. Um, okay. So first of all, I definitely think I got more out of this because we talked less. So like, I definitely think we did a better job this time. And because of that, I think I was able to appreciate it more. Um, right away, immediately, I could tell within the first 50 seconds, this album sounds miles ahead of Ride the Lightning. Mm-hmm. So much better in every way. I think every, I mentioned it several times while we were listening there. I think if I focused on one aspect, especially of the drums, like if I focused on just the kick, sometimes you could really hear the beater of the kick. And other times it was just a little subsonic, like sub frequency woof. You know, they definitely had a sub mic on the kick, like a sub kick mic or something. Okay. It wasn't just a 57 on the head or whatever. Like it was, it was recorded with some subsonic frequency thing. And I think that was probably the biggest difference in the mix, the entire thing. Like there, and maybe some of that could have been pulled out during master remaster Mm. too, but like the subsonic frequencies made it sound so much more modern so much more round but that was also like the low frequency management across the entire board and everything was way better like even james's vocals had little bits of like low frequencies in them Mm -hmm. you could feel a little bit more of his vocals because of that where i on ride the lightning everything felt very tinny and thin to me because there wasn't a lot of like mid frequencies it was like someone scooped them out or they just never existed in the first place like they used tiny capsule microphones to record everything is what it sounded like to me on Ride the Lightning. This immediately was just like whole other level of fidelity, in my opinion. Yeah. And I loved it. I said right away the mix felt more round. And what I mean by that is it all comes back to the low and mid frequencies to me. I think that this album, the frequencies were handled so perfectly across the board. And again, a lot of what I'm talking about now is probably has to do with the remaster. I'm sure it had to have been, those frequencies all had to have been there so they could be brought out with the remaster. Mm-hmm. I am assuming that the remaster compressed things more. And we'll we'll get into that in a second, Seek, because I just would assume the original master would be a lot more dynamic, just because that's how stuff was done in the 80s. Yeah. But I loved it. Struck song structure-wise, I love this. Th- I like this album across the board better than Ride the Lightning. Like, b- way by so I much that more. That's a fair opinion. I, think, I do think that, like, I don't know if there was any song on this album at all that came close to being like as awesome as For Whom the Bell Tolls. For Whom the Bell Tolls is just like, that was like such a cool song. And like, even like the riff of that song, I could remember and was thinking well, right, of it like the, next day. A, a big riff and then like a, a, a chorus. It was slower. Because, but, there, but there's not, I don't, kind of battery kind of master puppets but we talked about that being an oh, anti-chorus right the chorus there's no like anthemy shouty chorus there are things. no there mm-hmm. are no big anthemy hooky that's choruses true. there that comes later in metallica's career right but that's i like true like one of the things i thought about a couple of these songs also i have listened to this record like a bajillion times right. and not much in the last 10 years probably some but and, and I don't know if it's just because I listened to it a million times or just because the way the songs are written or whatever, but there are parts that are definitely not choruses that I know that, like, the words get stuck in my head. That mm. I feel like they're hooky okay. or whatever because, for whatever reason, because of the way that they're written. Now, do you think <coughs> do you think that they were trying to write the songs in such a way that they were slightly, like, less... Um, like, like, I guess in saying that, like this album does seem a little bit less accessible than Ride the Lightning because like Ride the Lightning did have few, those few moments where it was like, okay, like the other earlier today when I was listening to that one song where he, you hated it or whatever, that, not you hated it, but that one song that's like, he sings with the, I call my own, ba, da, 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 oh, okay. da, 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 like, like, you know, like that's like a shouted out in the stadium, ba, ba, da, 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 like I can remember that now having heard it only two times. I don't know if there'd be many, there was nothing like that on this album. No. So I, in some ways, I think it does feel you. You when you said that it was almost like an anti-chorus, that was like a great way to explain it. And then there were several songs where I noticed where, like, when they did get to the chorus, 
like the the guitar riff would start and they would play for like a measure or more before the vocals came in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's very uncharacteristic for any other genre of music. Usually the cor- the vocals or the hook right. starts a lead in before the chorus even starts. You know what I mean? And um, this was total the opposite of that. Like, let's just have a guitar riff going first. Maybe do the whole guitar riff once, and then when it repeats the second time is when the hooks, the the hook or whatever comes in, the 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 vocal part. And so that was really interesting and different. And I don't know if it's just a matter of stretching the song out a little bit more. Um, you know, be not being afraid to repeat parts multiple times before you know they get used which they did that a lot on ride the lightning but what they did on ride the lightning was they would go to a part have you'd hear a cool guitar riff and then they'd solo of it and stuff and then they just go switch completely and go to like a completely different feeling guitar riff and they didn't really go back to those parts again right this there was less repeating of of the instrumental riffs of the parts yes whereas on this they did a lot more repeating so whether it was a chorus or not if you heard them do a cool riff you probably were going to hear the riff again later in the song even if it was just a transition riff into another part and a lot of the songs started with something and then they had the whole song and then they ended it with the same thing with the beginning the intro riff Mm -hmm. that's really cool that's pretty common wait you know an intro riff and then use the outro riff for the same thing so but that was really cool i enjoyed that I did comment on his lyrics several times, like, mm, this is a little I bit like but that's not, I mean, cliche. That's not what it's about. But the no, one hundred percent. You're absolutely right. But the thing that does make me wonder is like is is it cliched and stereotypical because of this? Yeah. Like every other band afterwards was like, we're just gonna sh-, you know, just like he he wasn't a lot of the songs he wasn't singing so much as just like shouting a thing, like a short thing, you know, like whatever, like whatever. Cradle, rawr, whatever, like, rah, 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 you know, and, and I'm not just meaning the master, master, that's like a classic thing. But like a lot of the songs did just have this sort of like shouting thing. And um, w- that was really interesting. It's it's weird. The more I'm thinking about it, the more I like it less. <laughs> because I'm like, I'm like, what did I like about it really? Other than just the way that it sounded so much better than Ride the Lightning. And the, the answer is the guitar sounded so awesome. The whole time. Like the guitars sounded heavy. They sounded thick. They sounded like they had body to them. They sounded meaty. They sounded so heavy. Like I didn't remember I said in Ride the Lightning, there was none of it that felt heavy to me. Yes. And you kind of got frustrated with me. But I think you were thinking of it more from like, what is the guitar part doing? And not necessarily from how does it sound? Well, right. You know, but but, but again, you've heard this so many times. Like you're you like when you hear this song, do you envision them playing it? Like, what do you see in your head when you're listening to it? Which that might be a broader question. Uh, well, right. I don't, uh, it's kind of p- parts of it. Like I think. I mean, especially on those parts where where James is playing like really incredibly fast and tight. Like I am absolutely thinking about his hand mm-hmm. doing that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's what I think of when I when I hear something. I picture the musicians playing it in a studio usually. That's what I think of. Yeah, and I guess I mean I've seen just so much Metallica stuff. Just like so many right. people have that, like th- whatever the the pictures that are in my brain are weird. One of, one of the things I whatever the pictures that are in my brain when I listen to music is weird. But, but I just think that's always an interesting thing to to discuss with people about. But well, that's, and you and don't part have to of go the into thing, it, the, the guitar panning. Um, I think that I I don't know I don't have proof of this, but maybe did you Metallica's, feel like it was slightly heavier on one side than the other? Yeah. Yeah. James is on the left and it's heavier on the left. Yep, 100%. The whole time. I thought I And thought like that. it kind of drives me nuts and mm. I have noticed that in a lot of metal records that the James of the band, the principal songwriter and probably better rhythm player is in the left and his tone is either meatier or he's ahead or it's just louder. Mm. And um I like this album so much that I don't really think about it, but there have absolutely been times like if I'm listening to music, especially if I'm not really familiar with it and I'm kind of trying to listen to it in the background on headphones, Mm -hmm. like I have absolutely stopped records because of that mismatch of Mm -hmm, guitars. mm -hmm. And I don't like it if I was mixing that record and I heard that that's how the guitar tones were, or that's how it was. I would say you're not a band on a stage anymore. Bro man is here and here and 
other dude is here or we're just throwing other dudes right. rhythm guitars out because right. like I it needs I, to be even uh, right and balanced I really like mixes that are symmetrical and then when you break it it's way more but like one of those times my full disclosure sometimes you probably saw me messing around with my headphones and it's because I was trying to keep them on as well as I could so I could really get the stereo field but sometimes when Patrick was talking I had to break it a little bit we don't have the greatest monitoring setup here, which is funny because it's like audio oh, engineers listen to stuff, and here we are with the crappy monitoring setup. Yeah, but, but we're, I'm also very poor, so. Well, okay. Um, anyway, but one of those times I forget what song it was, where the lead guitar is panning back and forth, shoo shoo shoo, and like, oh, now all of a sudden there's a guitar over my right ear, and like I hadn't, and I'm like, oh, that's where that should be, and mm-hmm. it's. I only noticed it. A little bit towards the end of the album, I didn't really focus on it at the beginning. But being as it was my first time hearing this stuff, that's not really something I would focus on. But I also always wonder too, like, the, like the the hi hat is usually over on the left, and a it's little. in the center on this one. It I did notice that a little bit more. Uh, every once in a while, I picked up on it, and I'm like, that hi hat's in the center, and that's the, well. The drums sounded a lot more stereo, I think, on this album because Ride the Lightning, they were very mono. I think, or no, sorry, I'm getting it mixed up with when we mix, when we listen to that Sleep Token song, which the drums were completely mono in that. Sorry, whatever. Sorry, I don't need to get into that. Check that out on my channel, Sleep Token. It's I'm going to do the completely unmemorable song. I'm, I'm going to do the album when it comes out. I literally liked it. But anyway, it was awful. Anyway, anyway it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I, th- I, the one thing that I was surprised about, mm-hmm. because now sitting here and listening with you and doing all of this, that I'm much more sensitive to the production. I was quite surprised at how much I like the snare sound. Oh, even oh, though that's that really kind of tra- Even though you kind of trashed on it at the beginning. Okay. And I guess I kind of get it because it doesn't sound like big, fundamental, like that big, you know, whatever, 200 There was no body to it. Fundamental. Yeah. But it's loud as hell. I, yeah. I, that's basically all I need for music is I just need to hear the snare drum really loud and it yeah. happens very frequently. Yeah. That's what I like about music. <laughs> but it, it, it's loud and it's it's punchy and like I get it. I've mixed a lot of metal and it's really hard sometimes. Especially like I don't really know. I'm not like a metal production historian. Right. But like some of the tricks that you do now to make that happen, like I don't know if they were like, I mean, if they were it was very you know tastefully done but like i doubt that they were side chaining the snare to the guitars right. to like right to you know make it pop through and it it comes through and like it's really other than the lack of the fundamental which maybe they were making room for the bass or the palm mutes of the guitar or whatever but other than the lack of the fundamental i think that that snare drum drum is great well i think do you, do you think i think they did a good job get like making the drums sound good before they even recorded them oh yeah you know what i mean like he had a good that snare is, that, that complemented like, like and his voice i still the thing i'm most disappointed with about this is like his voice like i'm not saying that i expected it to be perfect or anything i do think there was it's the music is calling for the voice and in modern times it would be that's why i'm excited to listen to more modern metallica Uh when we get to 72 seasons but like his voice should be much drier and it should be more it should it should be there should be more of it it should be more in the mix, I feel. But I'm not saying that he was fantastic with his performance and like it deserved to be brought up or anything. So like maybe it's better where it is in the mix. But I just feel like if it was a little bit more dry and present, I really, really think that the volume of the lead vocals is like, for me, that can be a make it or break it thing. And this was way very much so in the acceptable pocket. Yeah. It was very much in the acceptable pocket. But one of the easiest ways to ruin an entire album for me is to have the vocals be on the line or below the acceptable volume pocket. If it's too low, I just have no use for the album. Even though I don't really care about the vocals, the mix has to be at least acceptably correct. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so this, but I, but we don't need to go into all that because I do think that this was acceptable. And I think that his vocal performance on this album was way better than it was on Ride the Lightning. There was very few Ride the Lightning like vocal moments that were really memorable. Whereas here, even the stuff we were talking about that was the sort of like anti-chorus stuff, it is memorable. It's like shouty. Like if I listened to this album multiple times, I'd probably remember a lot of the words because he was repeating a lot of stuff, shouting stuff. There was space between. He wasn't just like rapping the entire thing really fast which 
is like what a lot of vocals I listen to is just like a lot of lot of vocals hid inside of a small space in the song, not necessarily rapping, but, you know, saying a lot. And so that's not what this was. This was way more like calculated, say the thing I need to say right now. So to get the impact with the music and I mean, obviously, that's what you should do when you're writing a song. That's good integrating the vocal. That's a really good way to integrate the vocals into the song. Like you said, the vocals aren't like the focal point here. They're clearly not the focal point. And the guitars clearly are the focal point. I think the soloing was phenomenal now that I'm actually paying attention to it. And I do think that one of the ways it was easier for me to pay attention to is because I think this album sounded so much better than Ride the Lightning. I, would agree. I think like it was much easier for me to pay attention to it because it sounded so good. And... I mentioned several times I loved Kirk's. I don't know if he used it every time, but when he was playing without the wah and his, the tone of his guitar was just so good. I loved it. Yeah. It was very like, I don't know how, it, it, since I don't know all the guitar, technical guitar things, like it was very overdriven or, or, it, but like, like you, you, everything was so like, Sometimes when you're when you have the guitar and it's playing fast, you can't perceive it, but you can hear the fingers doing things when they're going to the next note. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't just mean sloppy playing. I mean, like you can have guitar tones that accentuate the string noises and fret noises and things, and it can sound totally fine and acceptable. But this it was so like. Like if you looked at the waveform, you would be able to see every individual note. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wouldn't I mean, just be like a, and I don't, I'm not, I don't mean the pauses in between where he's like being you. super accurate. I, the tone was just so perfect for what he was doing. I think at least that it just, it was so awesome. Like I, it just made me think of when we found that really good guitar tone for you when we were doing the second promo album. And then we used that guitar tone on everything in the third one. Okay. If you recall, I don't know. But like, I remember when we found, we, I was like, this is so cool. It sounds so good. And you did two solos like that on the second Primal album, which was hit Primal Waters' is old band. Go look them up. They're awesome. I've showed clips of it before on my channel. You are my But like, that's what the tone reminded me of. Like, maybe I enjoyed it because I had like some sort of a connection previous to this with the t guitar tone that sounded like that. I wish I knew like the, the technical thing so I could be like, I love it because of this. But I can't say that. But I don't know what the words. They're are. different and on different solos. And I would. Yes. And today, today the theme of the day is guitar solos, which is fine. That's what everyone wanted us to talk about the most. And I. Um, but it's it's probably it's the best part of the album probably right. Well, I don't know. I really like the riffs though. I, well, I like I like the I like the, of it. I like the riffs, but like that, and especially that, the middle part in Master oh. of Puppets. But all of the things like that, like when I'm listening to music, when I'm writing music, whatever, especially metal music, like my something in my heart or whatever. I like I like guitar parts especially mm -hmm. like cool guitar parts more than in general i'm not saying about this specifically or whatever but mm -hmm. like i typically i gravitate towards that thing than i do just weedly wah solos although i also love weedly wah solos mm -hmm. but i was uh I, th I thought much more about that this time and it, it it's it's better than i even thought, thought that it was mm -hmm. and right in the last time have i ever listened to all of master of puppets in order at once, more or less, with headphones on. I have no idea. Mm. Have I ever listened to it in a recording studio? Absolutely not. Not mm. even once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, not the whole record. Maybe mm -hmm. a song or two to like, as a reference track or something. Right. But like, never in a good spot. Like, I remember I was telling you before a couple of days ago as we were talking about getting ready to do this video, um, that the version of this that I listened to 50,000 times was some bad MP3 rip mm -hmm. that I did. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew where all the skips were. Right? right. I could sing the skips that were on the CD that it got burned from. But like most of that was like listening to it in a car. 
Right. And, and like some of that stuff, it just doesn't matter. And you can go pretend like it does, but it doesn't. Well, and like Metallica is not talked about in the same way that like Fleetwood Mac is where it's like, they're, they're known for like pushing the medium of music forward sonically. Like that's not what Metallica is is for. No. So like, I understand, like, obviously you wouldn't necessarily be like, let's go into the studio and listen on the monitors to like master of puppets, you know? No. So I, 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 I guess I'm just saying like, I understand that. Like, you know, that's why I bring up Fleetwood. Fleetwood Mac is, if you're not familiar, Fleetwood Mac is known for like their recordings sound like gorgeous and they like did lots of things, right? Yeah. I'm not wrong, right? Like Fleetwood Mac, so. wrong, ABBA, yeah. like the, the Swedish producing stuff like in the 70s with disco and stuff is like known for like, at the time, they did better than what the technology would even allow them at the, for at the time. Yeah. And like the Beatles are known for that kind of stuff too. But Metallica is not, right? That's my point with this. The Beatles. Let's I don't even I don't like the Beatles, Beatles. So whatever, it doesn't I'm, matter. I'm fine with not liking the Beatles. Overhyped. The only more overhyped band than the Beatles is Queen. But it's real Um okay. Please give me a vo- give me no. give me auto tune and I can do anything Freddie Mercury did. Oh Jesus. You are just wrong. <laughs> but I okay. Okay, okay. okay but seriously, whatever. Master of Puppets. But it's cool to not like the Beatles now. So like that's <laughs> You know what I learned today? Mm. Do you ever watch Finn McKenty on YouTube? Is he one of your YouTubers? The no. punk rock NBA guy? No. Uh, well, first of all, you would love his channel. He He's a guy that does really intelligent... If anyone watching this probably knows who Finn McKenty is, but if you don't, look him up. His channel is the punk rock MBA. M-B-A. And he does really cool... A lot of his stuff is sort of like... He takes he picks like a specific section of heavy music. It can be punk, metal, grunge, whatever, whatever. And he does like a he usually his videos are like he asks a question like why this 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 and then in his video he does like a cool little documentary style thing looking at every aspect and every angle of a thing. But um, he, I learned in all of his videos recently he keeps making fun of new metal that everyone now loves new metal so much and that Limp Biscuit is making a comeback and all this stuff. I forget why I brought this up, but Punk Rock NBA is great. We don't need to talk about that anymore, but yeah. I never did not pretend. Like oh, I hold on. I forgot. Like I forgot to point out at the beginning of the video game. that I put up my Evanescence Amy Lee poster, and I got my Evanescence back here because you talk trash about Evanescence in the Ride the Lightning video. I will video. always talk trash I will about not, We will have none of that on my channel. I will not stand for that. Okay. Evanescence is phenomenal. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So do you? should we listen to the... Uh, we are. I think that we should just say that Master of Puppets, good. Oh, yes. Way better than Ride the Lightning. It's also just good by itself. So first, if we're going to do this for my sake, I think we should listen to Battery because it's probably my favorite Metallica song. Okay, plus it's shorter. Are we, but like, I don't think we need to listen to the whole thing to hear the difference nope, between the masters. not at all. So let's listen to the remastered version that we just did. Okay. Let's start a few seconds into the... to that. I just want to get that in my brain. This does go on for a minute. You can skip forward. This is fine. Let it go here. Can I turn Don't, it up? No, no. It's so much quieter. I feel like the snare is more prominent. There's more fundamental in the snare. Yeah. I don't know if that bass thing is like that in the remaster. His vocals are up too. More prominent. Yeah, it is. They are up above the mix. Do the guitars sound wider? Maybe a little bit. One of the things I thought was interesting though, is on that uh, Give me pause when the main riff, when the main riff comes back in. We can go back to the go back to the remastered version. Oh my God! 
It's so much louder. I mean, that's like 10. It might be a file difference or something, but That wow. could be, yeah. But so this part, listen, listen to the balance between the guitars when the other one comes in on the other side. So they're equal when the stabs are happening, mm -hmm. and then when the riff starts, because it's dum -ba -da -bum -ba 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 -da, right? Mm -hmm. The stabs over here are the same level as the right. rhythm, but then when the riff starts, hmm. I, I don't, I didn't notice it as much. I did, I, that, I was listening for that. Do you think it's because I think there's just more high frequencies in the other in the guitar in Kirk's guitar or James or, guitar? And, well, highs. I don't know. Maybe it's because the bass is doing this. Maybe it's because the bass is doing it at the same time. Yeah, uh, yeah. That I think that maybe affected it as well. For a second, I was like, wait, is the bass panned over there as well? Over here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Over. With, well, oh, with sorry, Kirk. my strings yeah, yeah, you're backwards. Yeah, I thought maybe that maybe the bass they they could have doubled the bass and had him. Over there, because as well. it sounds it sounds really it sounds beefy. It here. sounds really even yeah. and beefy. And but then, I will like, say, the, when the whole riff comes in, though, it does sound good. It sounds like, awesome. Like it doesn't bother me that it doesn't bother me. I don't I don't know if I would ever listen to that and be bothered by that. I did perceive that the guitar is a little bit more prominent. I wouldn't say it was louder. I would say it's a little bit more prominent in on the one side, on the left side, it would be. But but not to the point where it would it would bother me. I don't yeah. think. No, I I've well. I've trained myself to be very sensitive right. to that over right. the last few months. Right. And I, anyway, so I'm glad we listened to the remastered version. Yeah, that's, yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't think, well, you know, it's interesting. I don't know. We're not listening on cassette. We're not listening on vinyl. So why wouldn't we listen to the version that was designed to be on digital media? That's what mastering is really for. We forget that sometimes. Mm, that's, it's mastering is true. about making the sound fit on the medium that it belongs on. All right. I, I can't really think of anything else that we need to say. I, I really enjoyed um, Metallica good yeah I think that now <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily thought that before Ride the Lightning you know I don't know I'm really excited for Justice for all because I just don't there's I don't I would be shocked if I thought it sounded better than this I'm not, shocked I'm not gonna ruin anything for you I'm not I was really looking forward to doing this video. This was the one that I was most looking okay. forward to doing. I think well, that's why I figured this is probably the one most people would be look would look forward to watching. Yeah. But I don't know. But I see we're already two hours and forty minutes in. I, some of the stuff I can cut, but we'll see. So. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we've got and justice for all coming up on the channel, and uh, we've got seventy two seasons when that comes out. I don't think we're gonna record it immediately when 72 seasons is released because it's released on Friday, April 14th. I assume we'll probably have to wait till maybe the following week. And if we try to get my other good friend, Chris Parker, who loves Metallica in on that one as well, I don't know how we're going to do that at all with you and me sitting here and him as a separate over there in Washington. I don't know if that's even possible, but we got that. And then I've also got a neck before that, even this month, in March, we have new Ellie Golding and new Depeche Mode coming out on the same day, which pff, talk about a tough day for me to record reactions to both of those. But just today, I pre-ordered myself a copy of the deluxe autographed edition from Amazon of the new Ellie Golding album. I'm super pumped for that. And obviously, Depeche Mode, what more can you say? If there ever was a band throughout all of history that rocks more and is heavier than Metallica, it's Depeche Mode. Yes. So, you know, they were... I mean, inducted into the Hall of Fame before Metallica, too. So, I'm sure. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So. That's very important for art. It is, definitely. I mean, you just want to prove to the people which band is better. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that's so funny because it, it's not even close in my head. Like to, <laughs> <laughs> not even remotely close. But, um, but anyway, joking aside, thank you very much for watching. We'll do more cool stuff here on my channel. Uh, Try to be nice in the comments. It really hurt my feelings. Some of those other co other comments. <laughs> oh God! But but no, not hurt really. our feelings. You can rip on me. Yeah, <laughs> I I did make you put your luscious locks out in you this did. video. I look great. You do look great. It makes me look. People notice my bald spot way more now, because you have all your extra hair over there. But... It's gray, but I have it. But your hair's blonde, so yeah. it's like you don't notice that as much. Look at We're my look say, at my facial. We're trying hair. to say goodbye. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye.